Wow, Jared Ricketts. Boom. Come on, Mr. Wow. Ricketts. Mr. Ricketts. How are you, Mama, sir? Mama, so made good. it. Mama, wow. I made it. Listen, I'm really good. I'm so excited you could come to my hood and yeah, we could sit outside. Yeah, we thought outside. we'd stay. Oh. A bit, yeah, sorry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. No, listen, I'm happy. I'm excited you guys could come out to my side of the hood just to just to be out in the sun and enjoy this environment. Lega, lega. Get to see a bit of what I do on my off time. It's one yes. of my favorite spots to be at. Okay. Um, eat surf yoga. Mm. And I uh, wanted to yeah. ask you about the spot. Um, it's it's uh, um, multiple businesses in one. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I've gotten to know this family. Uh, uh, it's called uh, it's, uh, Layla and her brother and uh, her fiance. They've got a tattoo parlor. They've got a, a surf school. They've also got the restaurant, which is Eat Surf Yoga, comes together. And the yoga, but as her mom was a yoga instructor, but also has a boutique. Mm. And I think it's awesome to see families come together no and, and develop businesses like this. And uh, they've really become a household name here in Simonstown and Glen Ken specifically and uh, I just love the energy it's calming you feel like you could be anywhere in the world right now um, I like the whole boho vibe um, <laughs> and they're all friendly I mean, you can see they, they let us do anything in their space yeah, they yeah, welcome yeah. You. great view arms. of the ocean come yeah. on love That's it beautiful. what else do you want Exactly. Uh, car alarms. Car alarms. Going <laughs> going off, you know. We're outside, guys. <laughs> We're literally sitting outside at one of the tables. And it's all about just listening and it's live. Mm. It's happening. It's Absolutely. here. This is life. This is life. Wow. This is life. It, well, thank you for welcoming us to, what, what is it, Glen Ken more than Simon's Town? But yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> good to welcome. Be I don't know how I get to officially welcome you to the area, but we're doing it. Yes. <laughs> uh, like well, the mayor. That, that's the whole idea of this podcast, is the idea to, to go out to artists rather than have artists come to a studio. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. exactly. And, and, and this is cool. We get to experience your life. Yes, as it unfolds before your so eyes. So is this where all the thinking happens? It does. Songwriting happens here, but it, it's for me, it's all about just listening to so stories. So you're going to do like a Tom's Diner thing? There we go. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Mixed and mastered by you. Yeah, is this where Mama made it? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Funny enough, no, a lot that of the was in private. <laughs> there we go. A lot of the newer stuff is being written here. But um, I love these kind of environments because you get to... Um, talk to people and they, they share their stories and their lives it inspires mm. you and some amazing artists actually come and chill here um, Arno Carstens comes here yes um, Nicholas they know him as Snotkop he <laughs> chills here <laughs> as well and Arno, it's really Arno cool. also lives close by here correct yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, Oscar Peterson yes. oh, wow. lives up the road cool. here as well okay. so my neighbours are really cool people in the oh, business yeah. right. and, uh, Oscar is uh, very fun Ocean View he's his hometown you know? there we go Oscar just Where like my just, grew up yeah, just well, like my dad bit, yeah. my, my dad's from Simonstown oh, so okay. um, I grew up between here and Ocean View and Oscar like literally up. lived in the next road from my aunt come on so, we can um, all borrow sugar from each other because we're all close by <laughs> that's what it's about ah uh. Oh, my way. Speaking of that, can, can we just rewind um, not too long ago because uh, I don't want to make you feel old, but uh, growing up. Yeah. How? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, life makes you feel <laughs> that way. <laughs> um, you know, from, from childhood, I mean, uh, where did you grow up? Uh, I think most people know the answer to that, but where did you grow up and um, where, how did you get into music? Man, so I grew up in an area called Athlo. We all know Athlo. <gasps> Best Gatsby's oh. in the world. <laughs> seven, seven, six, <laughs> four. Yes, Come on. <laughs> and, 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 you know, uh, although I grew up in a home where my mom and my dad really protected us from what was happening in our environment, yes. Yes. you still saw it. Yep. And um, the one thing I learned about, especially growing up at the Cape Flats, we were, we were always scared to dream big. Mm. I always had this vision that I wanted to be a singer, a songwriter, performer. But you'd, you know, people always talk you out of your dreams. They'd be like, dude, you, like, look where we come from. Like, <laughs> is it going to happen? You know, and I've learned people project fear. Yes. yes. And um, I just stuck to my guns. I started recording myself on, on uh, voice notes, on, on phones. And that's how I started testing the waters with what I sound like on a microphone. Yes. And from there... Um, connected with with a few friends that were also singing and rapping and doing their thing in community projects like you know places like the joseph stone became our home <laughs> did a lot of my training there which was just literally other people from the community yeah. sharing skills yeah um which is quite cool and um that's where it all began. I just, I just had this burning desire to be a musician, and I grabbed every opportunity that I can. Lekker. So every church bazaar, <laughs> I was there. Every local competition, I was there. And 
It was never about winning for me, which mm. is weird. I, I just love the idea that I got to be on stage. Be a part of it. That's a lot of the artists that I get to work with now. We come from that environment. Yes. And so we share. People like Lukman, Emo Adams. Yes. Um, we all come from the Joseph Stone. We all come from these areas. And so we always fondly remember like the kinds of uh, songs we had to sing and the, you know, the routines because we were all, all in boy bands. <laughs> and um, I was also in a local boy band called Protégé. And that's, yes, yes, yes. And that's, I think if I look back, it all equipped me to be where I am today because you learned how to work with other musicians. You learned how to roll with the punches. Yeah. You learned how to start out in the deep, dark, dingy nightclubs. Yes. And, and work your way up to the glossy, well lit stages of Cape Town. Just and the go world. back there uh, with Prada J. When did you join Prada J? Because mm -hmm. I toured with them. We did Joburg, uh, Kimberley, and Bloom together. Yes. Uh, when I was in my city all days back yes, in the day yes. uh, with Prada J. And it was um, uh, Ibrahim. Um, Iraf, yes. Uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Ikram. Ikram. Uh -huh. So Ibrahim, Ikram, Devon. And no, Wafik that's way before. And way before. <laughs> I joined when Wafik left because okay. he had gone to Idols. Yes. Correct. So, yes. And um, it was a wonderful experience for me because um, it was the first time that I got to do harmonies and actually yes. experience this whole boy band thing. Yes. And a um, lot of suits. discipline. The, yeah. powder blue, the powder blue suits. My group. I mean, I'm and still the peach, rocking and the, the blazers peach suits. and stuff. <laughs> Come on. And, and our, I think that was an era that was so awesome because... I love Protégé. It was Protégé, the boys. Yes. Um... So many, come on a limited edition come on <laughs> and and um that's where i got to meet uh, kurt yes. who's now the music director of idols alongside yes. his wife Tina. yes and um it's interesting to see where so many people started out and where they are today but you can see those skills coming to play like how to present yourself um to look good yes. you know how to perform on stage how to work with other musicians mm -hmm. there was a real brotherhood and sisterhood and and um, we had each other's backs you yes. know and you're going to perform on my show i'm going to perform on your show i mean we had tight schedules growing up mm. uh, when i started in that group. and it was it was no it was no there was no, no, there was was no budget there was no budget yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i mean it's like a little community academy kind of thing come on 100 you know? joseph stone is that institution that that instilled that you know, I, I remember Joseph Stone. My mom was a member at the Joseph Stone. So you can think of the, the Eon Group. Yes. Uh, back then, you can think of how long that, that place has been running. Mm. And that's what they that's what they give you. And that's what they instill in you. And so you have that brotherhood. And and so you're able to, to do things like that. Where, Yo, I've got a show this week, but I'm putting it together myself. And you'd call Mr. Mr. Um, Baker. Yes. Alan Baker, SK Sound. Um, he's passed now, but... Uh, Alan Baker, SK Sound, he did everything. All the shows that we did with Toya Abrams and 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 Smilo and yeah. all of those cats. That was the same, the <laughs> same, you know, trip. So that's amazing. I had no idea that you were part of part yes. of that because I had left, right? So um, coming back uh, at the time I was away would have been the time that Correct. you joined. Correct. It also kind of explains why the Cape Town music industry is so small. I mm -hmm. mean, like, like everybody knows each other, yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I, I think it comes down to, to roots like that. Very, very cool. And I think it's so important because these are the relationships that have also withstood the, te the test of time. Mm. So, so we, um, we still know each other. We still, when we see each other, we have that thing of like, <laughs> oh, look at where we are, but look at where we come from. Yes. And there's a pride about it. Yes, you know? 100%. Because I will say this, what's been beautiful to watch is that the circle that I come from, which is all these places and people that you've mentioned, we pulled each other along. Yes. You know, so where the one did really well, they pulled you up. When nice. you do really well, you pull the next one up. Exactly. And so as a circle, we've managed to get ourselves and our peers to a certain point um, to where we are now. And, I, and it's a beautiful thing. And I, I just... So there's I, no nastiness about, like, no. you, you hear of nastiness within a, a music industry, where it, wherever it might be, and there's always, like, one trying to outdo the other. And there, there's none of that. <laughs> Wishful thinking, I think. <laughs> this, you're still dealing with, with individuals that have a, a skill set yes. in a competitive environment. Mm. So I think we were just a lot more respectful in that era about, yes, I'm doing this, you're doing this, hey, the pie is big enough. Big, big enough, enough for, for all, all of us, us. to, to mm. share. Mm. I think um, I've experienced in my own career uh, people that can be really nasty, people mm. that can really try and curve you, curb you from from yes. the gatekeepers. Yeah, the gatekeepers, there, there are lots of know? gatekeepers out there, <laughs> and one has to be so cautious when you speak about these things because yes. 
people get sensitive still. And yes. So there's this whole, I know there's this call out culture of, you did this. I'm not about that. Um, I will say it still happens to this day. Yes, I just posted on social media about it the other day. Um, it's, it's, it's a tough environment because you're as good as your last performance, firstly. Mm. And secondly, everybody else is trying to outdo each other yeah. and be the preferred supplier of music yes. or entertainment. Because the industry has become so small, it's, 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 the, the work has become tight. Mm. And so everybody feels like I've got to step on your toes or I've yes. got to close that door or I've got to say something about you that's going to prevent yes. the next person from booking you. Yes. And um, yeah, I think I think we have a, a long time here together so we can definitely yes. dive <laughs> deeper into that conversation. <laughs> but yes, I come from that environment. Yes. And, 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 um, and me too, me too. And that's the beauty of it. Like you say, the Cape Town industry is small. Mm. But the great thing is that is that we've got relationships, real authentic relationships. And... Um, it's lovely to watch wh what everyone's doing and, yes. and how their careers are morphing, you know. Um, yeah. Okay. So growing up, uh, getting into music, what, when was your first musical break? Because I remember this young kid, musician, not really kid, but musician, yeah. <laughs> coming to the studio one day and you still are that person. You still are that down-to-earth, incredibly humble person uh, that you were. And I remember Thank how you. excited you were just to have your song on radio at the time. Sure. <laughs> uh, tell us about <laughs> your first break, your first song, how that all came about. Wow, so listen, um, I remember that very fondly. Yes. And um, how I got into the business in terms of airplay and getting into those circles was I started working for the radio station okay. in the marketing department. Okay. Because I didn't understand how things worked <coughs> when you submit mm. music, that kind of thing. And I thought, okay, what's the best thing to do? Let me... Well, so so he, he, he worked in the marketing department, but spent most of his life in the programming department. <laughs> well, one needs to know how to how to move around. <laughs> and <laughs> they were always looking for me. Jerry, we asked you to do something. Yeah. You haven't done yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. I was just chatting to the playlist manager. <laughs> and I was just chatting to this DJ. And like, know why you're here? I'm like, no, I know why I'm here. Yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> you don't know why yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a plan at play. And, and at play, haha, <laughs> see what I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but um, I remember recording my first demo, well, actual fully fledged song that was with Eclipse. Yes. And I think you might all remember Eclipse. You know, Carmel. you and I were just chatting about this last yes. night, and and you, when you said Eclipse, I just got taken back. I I, I went I went online searching for a specific song, which I eventually sent to you because I, I I found it. What? The even if I go, go even, even if, if I, I stay, <laughs> exactly, oh, that's the one. one. Yeah, that that is my that is my memory of, of Eclipse, to be honest with you. But um, you just took me back with that name, and and <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about working with Eclipse? So I got to meet him by reaching out to him. Uh -huh. I, I, I always admired his music and he was one of the first few artists out of Cape Town that really got the pop sound right. Mm, you know? did. Um, and it was at the time of, of I mean, uh, you know, just past sort of the, the Backstreet Boys era yes. as well. Yeah. You know? And it was still such a big sound. Yes. And I was really intrigued by the fact that this was a local artist yes. producing this kind of sound. Mm. And I got hold of him and um, he, we had a meeting and he helped me with songwriting, with developing that. And we went into studio and I was really wet behind the ears. Didn't know anything about how to be in studio. Didn't know how sort of studio etiquette, songwriting, all of those things. And he really kind of helped groom me in that space. Um, and he recorded me. The first song was called, gosh, let me think about this. <laughs> uh, Don't Want Your Love, Went Into City Lights. Wow. All these songs that I recorded. Uh, do you know, I was saying to him in the car, you know, <laughs> I was racking my brain trying to think of your first song. Uh. Trying to think of your first radio song. Because in my mind, you've been around forever. <laughs> yeah. you know, it really feels like long, that. Long time. And I was trying to think, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't, it wasn't anything from the album. It was, it was before that. And I could not think of so what So City it was. Lights was the song that really got high rotation yes, between the first time down. Yes. And it said, I came here tonight because I want to enjoy mm. the mood underneath the City, city Lights. I remember yeah, that. that song. And... Um, that was, was my first taste of, of uh, hearing myself proper on radio with the top 40 countdown mm. with all these things. <laughs> and and it, that song helped me 
get introduced to the DJs, yes. you know, and 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 uh, the other radio stations and that bigger community. And, and then there was stay and dismissed, and and that was with um, Munib Khalant. Yes, you know, so Munib Khalant was another amazing Mo. producer that I worked with, and it all happened consecutively. So I started mm. with those songs, then. Um, after the success of those songs, I wanted to change it up a bit okay. and I become acquainted with Munib. I really believed in him. He had his home studio. Yes. Cool vibe, cool guy. And he also helped me with songwriting and developing what it is I want to do, the sound of who Jadid Ricketts mm. is. And um, I recorded Stay and Dismissed and that mm. also just opened up so many doors. Um, but it, w it didn't come without struggle because yeah. as much as you had these number one singles and mm. they were playing, you were still this self-funded artists yes. that still knew nothing about the greater industry mm. yes. and and I think it was a, it was an exciting but scary time because now stations know where you are they want to book you for festivals but you don't have a band you don't even have budget for a band yeah. you don't even have budget for stage clothing yeah. you don't even have a team and for somebody who, 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 who says that I mean you do put on quite a show Thank you. <laughs> when you are on stage with the band, with the with the the gear, with aye, your aye. with your gold get up at the Yo, at the music festival yes. at the Newlands Cricket Ground, remember, remember that? that? Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I just went through a whack time where I was like, you know what? I'm so grateful to God for what He's done. Let me just step into the light and platform that He's given me. Yeah. Mm. And um, you you know, I think when you are um. This is what I love about podcasts. We have dogs yeah, running we around. Dogs. We've got people parking their cars. <laughs> the odd baby crying. It's brilliant. It's Cape Town. Yeah. And and um, I, I must admit, I, I I just I think any artist goes through that where you're limited with resources. Yes. You get a platform. You make the most. You milk it. it. You've got to make it happen. You Come milk on. It. So when I started doing the big shows, the big corporates, I. Faked it, man. I mm. was like borrowing blazers and borrowing clothes from people. <laughs> I'd watch other people perform and yes. take and steal with the eye. I then learned how to engage with an audience. And people were like... And you do that well. Thank you. And I, and like it was really cool because people would come to me and say, dude, did you, were you at the Waterfront Theatre School? Or were you at the... <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm from the uh, Academy of self The Hood. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the same guy selling the chips and the fish yes, on the side of the, the road. He 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 taught yes. me how to yeah. be a performer. Yes. And and I think I think that's when you speak about the circle that yes. we that we started yes. out in. Yes. That was the common thread is that we were all hustling, we were all yes. faking it. Everybody and, was, was and on that buzz. Yeah, and, and I think the one thing I, I, I take from that journey and experience is that you've always had what you needed, man. Yes. We make so many excuses. It's just about ourselves. bringing it to light. It's yes. about bringing it to the fore. It's yes. about making it happen. Yeah. And, and 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 realizing that you have the skill set. Yes. Mm. And I believe that God always gives you everything that you need at that moment. Mm. And you've just got to sort of open your eyes wider and go, okay, how can I make this work? Yeah. Mm. And I and I and I think you've done it in your life. That's why you're sitting where you're sitting. And you've done it. That's why you're sitting with yourself. This is an international artist staring <laughs> back at me as well. And 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 um, it's been beautiful. But I've learned a lot. Yeah. And and like I said, great relationships and lots of struggles with 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 um, things that come with putting yourself and throwing yourself out into the public eye and and being this thing that people expect you to be when you're an artist. Yes. It, it, it unfolds later on in life because yes. certain uh, things that you are, that you fear start coming to the fore. Because you're human, you're still, as much as you're a performer, you're still a person. Yes. And people will pick at you and pull you apart. And, you know, why, why are you doing this? And people feel like they own you when you're an artist. Yes. I most definitely want to get into the subject of mental health. And yes. Some, you know, we got a lot to chat about as mm -hmm. far as that is concerned. Definitely. Um, break the rules. Uh, the album. Uh -huh. I, I, I want to talk about that just for a bit because there's stuff that isn't on there. Is is there a place or is there ever going to be a place where you are going to be putting those early songs onto? Because it doesn't really seem like there's a body of work where that lives right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. So, um, for me, it's 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 always been trial and error. Mm. And I think when you look at my what do they call it discography and yeah. all these I, things. I, that's what I'm saying. I was I, I would have expected to have seen like um, uh, well, Stay and Dismiss wasn't on there. No, no. So I would expect to have seen that kind of city lights. Yeah. I would expect to have seen yeah. that on there. And when listening to the album, you actually do realize that um, there's a lot of tracks on there 
uh, aside from the singles. So you would you would have expected to kind of be an up until now, yeah. shall we say? Rather yeah, than it's a, a good idea. I might just steal that idea. Yeah, <laughs> no, steal it, have it. Here's my I, number. <laughs> to be honest, my my whole mentality and it's a weird thing is that when I have written and recorded a song, mm. that moment has passed. Mm. Mm. Okay. And so I never feel like I have to rehash it. It yes. served its purpose in the moment, in the time that it was yes. released. And I think maybe I've got to change my thinking yes. about it because just talking to you guys about it and remembering those songs, I'm going, whoa. I was, was a kid. They were cool songs. Yeah. I was a kid. So but you they made redo. you. Do you think Hanson have stopped with Umbop? Umbop. Umbop. Even though it's a song they probably like to bury. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, done, it's done well for them. Yeah. For sure. Look, I, I, I'm, I'm also still learning. Yes. I yeah. mean, I honestly wake up in the morning and I just try to challenge myself. Mm. And if it's a new song, if it's a performance, if it's a show. Um, and then the moment happens and it's done. Yeah. And, and I need to also maybe take a few steps back and maybe look at the body of work and say, how do I reel it in mm -hmm. and create something special to be honest in my life i've never really had like a fully fledged plan mm -hmm. people look at my, my career and maybe say oh this was well thought out mm. no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i still don't have that massive team that conspires and sits with a with a storyboard and go maybe this is how you're gonna segue yeah. this is <laughs> this is what you've got planned for the next two years okay yeah maybe i should but it's just never been me because to be honest, I'm, I'm a creative and I've always found different spaces to express myself. Yes. What a lot of people don't know is I've, I've been commissioned to do um, art installations that were showcased at the waterfront. Okay. I've been featured in, 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 in uh, various publications around art because I studied art and design. That's okay. what people don't know. I'm a graphic designer by trade and I've worked in, uh, for Media24 and uh, New Media Publishing, designing okay. the magazines that people would, would read for many years. And... Um, yeah, I just always found a space where I could could express myself. And so I think I, why maybe why I haven't done that was it, it's one part yes. of my creative process. So if I'm going to look at all the songs, I've got to look at all the work Everything. that I've done as a creative and maybe pull that together. Maybe that's a cool concept for a show. I don't yeah, know. Yes. maybe, maybe. <laughs> because um, uh, uh, when you do a show, you still include those songs. Yeah. So it's still part of you. They're still yeah. part of, of, uh, of Jared. Now... Jared Ricketts or just Jared? It used to be just Jared, and then it turned just into Jared. <laughs> just Jared. Just Jared. And Jared. then it turned into Jared Ricketts. Uh, where are we as far as that Maybe is? Maybe I should change my name and just make it hyphenated. Just yeah. Jared. Just yeah. Jared. <laughs> no, JR. I, no, then we already got a JR. Yeah, you. <laughs> This Ewing. town ain't big enough for the both of us. <laughs> no, listen. Make the circle bigger. <laughs> There's been so many J artists, maybe that's why I haven't done it. And that's uh, the thing about names and artists and stage names. I just, yes. maybe it's a shift I've got to make, but I've always, to me, I've just been Jared Ricketts, the guy that went to crash, went to primary school, <laughs> went to high school, found a career and is living and trying to still figure out this thing called life. Yes. And you forget that there's this other window Yes. that's, People on the receiving end of music and your TV performances and buying tickets to the shows, they have this persona and this idea of this persona perception, of who you yeah. are and perception. And, and I just haven't put the two together. Mm. Yes. Because I think, like I said, what a lot of people don't realize is that I'm just a creative, I'm a person just trying to trying to figure this thing out because yeah. there's yeah. no one way to, to tackle this industry. There's no yes. one way to, to, to be an artist and to make a success of it. And mm. so maybe I've got to change that image because to be honest, I, I've, I've always had self-confidence issues. I've always not seen myself as that artist. So I've, it's always weird when people come up to me and it's been happening more and more lately where they go, I mean, there was this great eight child that came up to me in the morning and said, I love the music and I love what you do. That's and you kind of go like... I, I, oh, I, you you saw that and you heard <laughs> that, and then I do a festival and I and I okay I'm gonna sing Take Me to Your Heart and people go wow and they start singing the verses mm. and the chorus. Yes, and you forget that there's this whole other side. Yes, um, yes. and and I think for me, it's weird because I I don't see myself as that person. Yeah, I don't. Mm. It's a, it, even Jad, that when you say Jared Ricketts, it feels like another person. Can yeah. I can I can I just be honest with you here? I. I feel like you're talking about me <laughs> when, when you say that. Like, I don't feel like I'm particularly good at radio. Come on, guys. No, no, no. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm just like, like that's my job. I just like talk 
on the radio and I play songs and stuff. And then people come up to me like, my kid's been listening to you since he was 10 <laughs> years old, <laughs> since he was six years old. And he's now uh, like matriculated. And uh, I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad <laughs> thing. Um, like kids come up to me and, and ask for pictures and things. And, you know, um, and like people come up to you and, you know, ask for autographs and stuff. And it's like, it's kind of weird. Mm. It's even weird that it's Paul Pladen, you know, because like I've just always been that. That's what I said on my ID. I, for, in my mind, I'm still that kid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think what's weird is when other people value you. Yes. Because when you don't place value on it and other yes. people do, and you don't understand what it means to somebody else, because mm. I think the one thing when you are a voice on radio and yes. your personality consistently like for years and when you're a singer consistently for years mm. you forget that you are part of a soundtrack yes and a to someone's life to someone else's and life. somebody exactly. will come up to you and say exactly. um uh, uh you played the song for somebody and and you know you you think about it and it's like you don't realize the people's lives that you touch uh -huh. because you played a song for somebody on uh their birthday or because their father died and uh, that was so special to them mm -hmm. and they are f will forever remember that moment. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Um, it's magical. I, I, it is. And it's the same thing I'm sure for you. If, if, if you play a song that touched somebody or was a special moment in somebody's life, maybe yeah. them and a partner, maybe uh, it got them through a tough time. Listen, when I released my song Paradise, I had so many people oh, telling paradise. me that their children were conceived to that song. And I don't, didn't know how to take it. It was like, ah, it's visuals. A bunch, I don't it's a bunch of that. Jareds <laughs> running around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think it's beautiful, like I said, when you can create a soundtrack to someone's life and when people can interact with your art mm. and your creativity and who you are. And it's weird to mean something to someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, like I say, grew up maybe on an island I was a very quiet child mm. my creativity was my escapism uh, my mom always spoke about the time where you know she'd shop for foil you know she used to wrap your lunch in foil yes. yes come Monday there's no foil she can't find it and she comes into my room and <laughs> I've made all kinds of creatures with the foil <laughs> and it's hanging from the ceiling and she'd want to like <laughs> reprimand me because I've just created stuff yes and and I think I think even as an adult I'm still trying to break out of that yes. because I'm still me. I'm still in my bubble. Yes. Mm. And I come with my own set of insecurities. And, and, and like I said, when somebody else says, hey, I see you. Mm. And you mean something to yeah. me. Yes. And um, I value that. I go, oh, that's weird. Like, yeah. Usually it's just me it's, in my it's, bubble. It's difficult to take on. Yeah. No, I definitely, I definitely feel that. Mm. Yeah. Look, it's, it's for me... You know, I look at you. I look at your career, and I, I think about how how we actually met, and and that was that was a long time Yo. ago. Oh, how did you meet actually? So, so Jared actually hit me up um, when I was uh, one of the entertainment managers for the Venetian in Macau. Okay. Yes, and he hit me up um, <laughs> saying he wanted to come to Macau. Yes. So then I checked out his profile and did all of those things. I was trying to get him in, but it was a very weird time. At, at the Venetian during that time, because we, um, I was I was changing positions, mm. and um, at the same time while running my own my own business and looking at moving back to South Africa at that time. I so remember you had those conversations. It was a very very weird time, and I think he had done really well in Macau um, yeah. with what with what we had built and how we set it up. Yeah, um, but it just wasn't the right time. Mm. And then um, I came back to South Africa and supposed to meet because I think my wife also interviewed you at some point um, on, on taxi. Yes. So. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yo. And the pieces just get put together. You know, so and, and at that point, Rush and I weren't, weren't together. Yeah. Um, but then and, and similarly she was so still your manager she was still time. my manager mm. yeah I mean she didn't manage me straight away we I came back here and I tried to try to get her to work with me and be my manager and yeah. run things for me in South yeah. Africa but she was like no not not right now I, I can't and so I waited I stuck around in Cape Town for three weeks four weeks I think trying to get her to, to agree yeah um, and it just didn't happen so I went back and only later on I'm talking like five months later six months later she messaged me um, to say, look, are you still keen to do this? But that's another thing. My point was <laughs> the fact that I look at you and I look at your career and I look at how you've grown and I look at your 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 wife 
yeah. who's also your manager. And, yeah. I, and I see the similarities. I'm just like, because you need, we need that grounding. Yeah. Uh, firstly, especially as a creative. My wife makes sense of that. Right? Yeah. She, she, I think that's I, support as well. No, 100%. You know? And I think that also touches on, on, on the, mental, the mental aspect and the mental awareness aspect mm-hmm. where people need to go, look here, man. I actually just need a second to just talk without feeling judged, without feeling like f- frowned upon or anything. But someone yeah. who can just actually just look at me and, and have a conversation. And sometimes I don't need you to say anything. Mm. Like... I just need to talk. Just be there. Yeah. Just be there. Just I just need to talk. Yeah. Just listen. That type of thing. Yeah. And I think, but um, and 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 Paul, Paul will will obviously discuss that more. But I just I'm looking at it from my side as an artist and and as someone who's now married his manager hey. and, and and we have that you know that same type of thing going. I mean, you you married your manager you guys are married (laughs) i see you i see you i see you in europe i see you on your trips i see you guys dressing all top billing you know i see you i see you very kind and 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 that's amazing to to watch from the outside Mm. um i you know even though i don't speak much or comment or, or or anything i i see it and I'm always like, I celebrate the victories for our people, man. For, yeah. you know, for, for our, our artists, our people, like coming from Joseph Stone or City Hall or um, the, the, the um, small little fete or, or Mardi Gras, whatever that we perform at, to what, to what we're doing right now. It's yeah. just like, yes, look, look what we've done, yeah. you know? And to get that recognition now, it's also t- isn't to why, like, chilling with someone like Paul and going, look, Paul said to me, dude, do you want to do this thing together? And I was like, hell yes, I want to do this thing together. <laughs> I mean, let's, why are you asking me? This is Paul, <laughs> the Paul. <laughs> let's, let's do it, you know? And, and, and so for me, I'm like, okay, we get to do this. And so I get to tap in with him from, from a radio's perspective. And he has his, his vision and all this um, wisdom yeah. when, it comes to, when it comes to what's happening in, in popular music or um what the industry is like mm-hmm. in south africa or in mm-hmm. cape town um right now it's like so i'm happy to have that you know that so now my eyes on 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 both which is liquor i get, i was like okay cool so this is what we're doing this is this is what i hear this is what paul says uh i see this this and this i'm going okay from the ground i see this this and this which is liquor, man. It's, it's, it's a liquor feeling. And why I feel like this right now, this conversation needed to happen. Yeah. Um, and, this, and, this, and the way that we're doing it is um, it, it, the take on it is different. Mm. Come on. You know what I mean? And we get to feel and we get to tap into things like this. So we're so different and so the same if you look at our journeys and, yes. and how we experience things, our lived experiences. And um, to talk about, uh, you know, the, the, the concept of marriage and, and marrying your manager. And, and, and I think artists, we, we, we need safe spaces. Yes. And uh, it's a beautiful thing when you can find it in your partner. When yes. your partner takes the time to, to understand what you do. Exactly. And, and, and how your job works. Yes. You know, and, and how things um, make you feel and what... what what your aspirations are, and hey, let's put our heads together and let's see how we, how we, um, <laughs> yo, we've got like three dogs <laughs> wanting to fight. Hey. It's taking me back to growing up and seeing the dogs in the road there, you know? Um, fetch house pipe, fetch house yeah, pipe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, anyway, they're part of the conversation. But, <laughs> but it's a wonderful thing. And Kim, who is, is an industrial psychologist, and we've just found the synergy in that she comes with her world and and I come with my world, and it and it, it works together because she gets to look at things from the outside and say, "Hey, this is this is how um, I see it. Yes. This is how you should see it." I may be we're smiling because we're <laughs> not so here. Um, one like lady you're with trying like, to get, you're trying to talk about something how really many deep. dogs can one person own? People, what's legal when it comes to that? Anyway, that's another discussion. That's another question, um, definitely. No, I also did work with yeah, SPCA. So that's just yeah, me too. Yeah. Anyway, and I, and I, I you're just trying to talk about something really deep, and yeah, and I've got like smiles on, on, on my face. <laughs> but anyway. That's 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 what I love about the the vlogging and the podcast yeah. is that this is normal, it's natural, exactly, it's just yeah. how things unfold. Very cool. um, but I, I think for Kim and I, what what was crazy was to see the level of support from the outside. Yes. Um, for for the two of us, and how as a couple, you can do great things together. Mm. And when you really invest in your partner and you take 
interest and mm. you and you you want to understand things. You know, so many times I see these couples and it's like, oh, you, what does your husband do? It does something, mm. you know, mm. whatever. He's a manager, but I don't know. Or mm. My wife does whatever. Or my partner does whatever. And mm. and and what worked for us was 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 just really understanding that hey, we're in this together. Yes. And I'll support you. I'll be your your leg when you can't stand it. You'll be my leg. Yes. When I can't stand. And it's been wonderful to watch Kim grow in her own light mm-hmm. and in her own right um, into her light. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I mean, she's taking on so much right now. She's managing me. She's she heads up customer analytics as well. Besides being an industrial psychologist, so she. she tells businesses how people perceive them and yes. what they can do in terms oh, of policies wow. and 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 okay. um, just generally how they can uh, get get people to to migrate to them yes better. yes and and it's interesting when we sit down and we have talks um, people always look at Kim and I and go like you guys just went from couple mode to like business business <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> conversations and like deep real stuff yeah. and, yes. and I think that's been the success of our marriage thus far yeah. and and we still have a lot to learn we're only married for two years mm-hmm. and it's been beautiful and I think with her I feel like I can do so much yes um, she really teaches me that I can push myself and that it's mm-hmm. okay not to be okay sometimes yes. and, and to express yourself and you know, with the masculinity, we're always like, I can mm-hmm. deal and I'm not going to share. And <laughs> I don't want to burden you. But, but she's really been that, 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 that cushion that, that breaks my fall sometimes. Yeah, beautiful. And um, on the other conversation, yeah, I think networking is so important. And yes. I think when people, legends like Paul Playden can say, <laughs> um, and I mean it, um, hey, come along this journey with me because you can pick anybody to be with you, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think for me, that's why I, I give my all on stage because I know the organizers could have booked anyone. Yes, yes. But exactly. they booked me and when I'm here, I'm going to do the things. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and that's where you are with him and I think it's <coughs> wonderful that, that you've created this platform to connect mm. we, and I think you're learning so much along the way that um, we all... We all have different lives, but the experiences sort of cross over, and you yes. all meet in certain points emotionally. Yep. And and also that 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 um, we watch each other grow, and it's an interesting time of our lives now. Yeah. We we're, we're adults, we're married. Some of us are parents, and and what does it mean from here onward? Like, what's the next? And I I have those conversations with myself with Kim every day, where I go, so we've done X, Y, and Z, and I've done X, Y, and Z. Um, but what's my next? I mean, I'm yes. 35 and um, mm-hmm. five years to 40 and I'm kind of going, what does it mean for me? And in terms of music and, and this journey that I've been on and us together and and how do we how do we live more? How do we uh, make sure the experiences that we are having are about our growth mm. and you know, are conducive to our growth? And and, and it's, it's that's why I say there's no actual plan. I think I'm just feeling it out and with every every turn and corner mm. and, and whatever life presents I think I'm just trying to act within my character and, yes. and, yeah. and maintain who I am and and because to be honest like you said I haven't changed you haven't changed <laughs> and <laughs> I think the biggest lesson for me especially after the pandemic and watching people who have been professional s- professionals all their life and, and have businesses watch that crumble mm. you know watching death happen rapidly before your eyes mm. I mean yeah. all my black pants and shirts and blazers are washed out because I've had to go through so many funerals. Yeah, yeah. It just taught me that that this is fleeting, man. Mm. Like the fame that you might acquire, the following that you might acquire mm. and and um, all the things that we're supposed to value in terms of what's glossy and shiny. Yes. Man, we're going to live and then we're going to die. So yes. so whatever's happening in between that, just make it count. Yes. Yes. Make it be conducive to your growth and who you are as a person. Because yeah. we're going to leave. We're going to yeah. all have to check out. And then we don't know if we're going to see you there. We're going to see you there. <laughs> <laughs> <if it's gonna laughs> or you're not going to see you <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I just, I'm, I'm just trying to, as I become an, uh, uh, an adult, I'm just really grateful for the life that I have. I'm grateful for the, for the experiences, good or bad. Because it's made me who I am, and and I'm still, I'm still dealing with a lot. I mean, we we we're, we're going to talk about mental health. We're going to yes. talk about anxiety, mm. and I think we can all say and share that we've been through our own levels of that. Yes, it, it you, makes you human. Yeah, and as long as you can, you remember that you're human. You realize this this moment right now, yeah. where I'm breathing in oxygen yes. and I'm alive and I'm well. 
that is what counts. Yes. I mean, you, you brought it up now, so we might as well talk about it now. You said you are an ambassador for... For Cape Mental Health. Yes. I've been the ambassador for about, I would say, six, seven years, but I've been working with the organization that do uh, the Kite Festival yes. with the Raise Funds, and I, that was the first big stage I got to perform on at the yes. age of 17. Okay. And I've been with them for years and years and, and years. And we were broadcasting from the Kite Festival, I remember. Yes, like yes. In Musenberg. <laughs> the Kite Festival had been going for a while, I think, before then, hadn't it? Or correct. That, 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 no, yeah. correct. It's an ongoing thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the been kites, for years. Yes, mm. and the Kites mm. represent that whole... Um, the elevating of the conversation around mental health, about being seen, yes. Yes. you know, not hiding it. Yeah. And I visit schools. I mean, before the pandemic, for a year, I visited more than 70 schools around the Western Cape wow. talking about mental health and my journey. How, how did that all come about? How did you become the ambassador for Cape Mental Health? I mean, wh- 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 it just happened naturally. So okay. I, I started performing at the Kite Festival every year, yes. like to know the organization and really fell in love with the work that they do. Mm. Um, as a child, I didn't understand mental health. I didn't know what it meant, mm. you know, because the community I come from says, <laughs> mm. talk to the priest and, and, and that's how you fix things yes. and faith and is important yes. but there's a real real dynamic yeah. that is mental health that affects your daily life I think especially in, in, in our communities yeah. in, in especially in our communities um, in, in, in the I'd say lesser fortunate but in, in the Cape Flats communities in, in those communities it's like no 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 like you you there's no way that is happening and and it's either it never gets spoken about yeah. or it's swept under the rug and it's like you you labeled as as um a cry baby or or, or someone or sensitive weak or, you know what mm. I, no, no, he's bio sensitive no yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. gotta it's always that with with within our communities and i'm I, i'm happy like with my kids i'm i'm trying to raise that you know yeah. i'm trying to raise um strong strong-minded kids who are open and free to speak about whatever it is they're yeah. feeling, you know. Because I I grew up like that, you know. I, I had an older brother who was like, not, and, and up until today we have um, these type of we knock heads or conversations where no 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 that's you know you just you just being a morphy, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 that's what it is like to be able to be open and speak about these type of things because man, it 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 starts there, yeah. And by the time they hit. Um, by the time you hit 15, 16, 20, 21, you've become this person inside yourself mm-hmm. who doesn't speak out about what you're feeling or what you're needing or those type of things. And, and so life starts going in a different direction. Mm-hmm. Then people want to know, why is he being like that? Yeah. You know, or why is she being like that? Yeah. But you never um, really know what a person's going through internally as well. Exactly. And, and mentally. Um, and it is quite weird that, I mean... Y- I've, I've had this tendency in my life to put people on pedestals. Yes. Mm-hmm. And those who I look up, look up to particularly and wanted to be like, you know, and you put them on pedestals and then you realize, you know, they had the same insecurities that you do. They worried about the same things that you do. They um, feared the same things that you do, but you would never have said. Yeah. You know, and I think about, uh, you know, even the thing, and it, it's a strange thing to say, but the things I've learned about my dad since he passed away and, and his vulnerabilities, um, I never thought they existed. Yeah. You know, because he's dead and he's, he's strong dad, and you he know? deals and he's the head. Exactly. Then. Yeah. And you find out there are insecurities, there are vulnerabilities, there are, and you think to yourself, well, if everybody else is going through it, why am I so um, paralyzed by it? For sure. I mean, I had a conversation with my mom. She turned 70 this year. And I said, how do you feel? She says, I still feel like that 20-year-old. My mind has not shifted. Yeah. And in terms of your dad, what you must realize, he, he's you yes. right now, just a little bit older. Yeah. Mm. And, and the title of parent or whatever doesn't change the fact that you're a person. And yes. You have human experiences. Yes. 
I don't know. It takes it takes getting older to realize this. Yeah, that's the beauty of life, man. That's <laughs> why when that uncle or auntie always told you you no, won't understand it now. No, I don't like now. it. Yes. I don't like it. <laughs> can, <laughs> we, can we please go back? Can we please Rewind go, and rewrite. Can we go I don't want 20? to adult anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm done with that adulting. <laughs> I want to go back 20 years and know what I know now. Come on. <laughs> In retrospect, we can all live better and be yes. better. And I mean, I've always had those conversations with people who said you won't understand this now. Yeah. You won't get it yeah. now. And as I get old, I'm going, oh. oh that's what you meant. I was a smart ass saying, ah, you can't tell me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you did. You told me. You told me things. And, 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 and I think it's just the beauty of life, man. And, and it's about embracing the mistakes. It's about embracing where you might have gone wrong. It's yes. about knowing that your feelings are valid. And in terms of mental health, in terms of, I would say, masculinity, men, Mm. It's it's a very new conversation yes. to to be able to embrace feelings. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at you look at videos and 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 you maybe look at movies and you look at advertising from the eighties. Yes, men were like macho. Yes, with, with, a, big, with a big mustache. Yeah, you needed yeah. a big mustache to be a man. Yeah, mustaches <laughs> and synthwave. <laughs> 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 yeah, and 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 I think I think it's it's a culture shift, which is great. Yes, I think now you are seeing more men come to the fore even talking about the the domestic abuse you know yes. just what they're going through because it was a very female feminine spearheaded conversation yes mm -hmm. now it's weird in the media to say oh this man is taking his his partner his female partner to court because she's abusive you got yes. like, you know the, the thing that we do <laughs> <"Bruh>, what <laughs> yeah. yeah and 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 but it's definitely something that needs to be spoken about correct you know? and that's um, and that's one element yeah but mental health i mean now you hear people speaking about oh i have to take a break i'm taking corporates are now saying take a mental health day mm. Mm. um and it's a it's a great thing to to see but but it's it's us that have been programmed yeah. that I have to acclimatize to the shift i wish i was born now yeah. in a time where I can go to my teacher and say I'm not feeling good I'm not coming in I yes. need a mental yeah. Yeah. Uh, health day or, yeah. or I can go to my family and say and they and they will actually understand when yes. I say I can't but you now know? on on that because I mean I, I you know within within my space within my family and, and I uh, know I know of a lot of people who who have had mental breakdowns who have yeah. you know been uh, been hospitalized or or been sent to uh, an institution or those type of things and 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 a lot of people who depend on things like Nuzac and um, like the oh yeah the range medication. of the range mm. of medication that that is out there and um, so I mean my, my my psychologist put me put me on something a couple of years back yeah. and I was like um, I think I tried it for about a month and a half and I went, nah, that's With not like me. like a Zulu blues. Yeah, I just said, that's not me, you know. Yeah. She said, you think you can do it without us? And I said, no, I can't. I can do it without it. That's, as long as I've got these check-ins weekly, be good, you know. I yeah. mean, before, men didn't speak, or people, just people. I'm not even going to say, generalize and say men or women. People never spoke openly about the fact that they were seeing a psychologist. Yeah. Or seeing, and, and I'm just like, yeah, man, a you, stigma you, attached to you it. know what I mean? I'm just like, man, I, I have a psychologist. She's amazing. Yeah. You know, she speaks to me. I sit there, I chill on the couch. Man. We have tea, we talk, it's liquor. And mm -hmm. I walk out there and I'm like, whew, yo, but I can I could talk last, to someone. Up yeah. until last year, I refused to see a psychologist. Yeah. Because I was like, I can deal with this myself. I yeah. don't need somebody to, to talk to. And then once you go. Exactly. Like, actually, you know. Um, can the, the first session was like an hour and a half. I'm like, <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we do this again tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I like this so much. And, you know? and she's, oh, oh, he's like, sure, I, sure, no problem. I just get to talk about me for <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very self-fulfilling. Yes, but but you know, I think I think it's the ideas that we've had about psychology. You yes. had to like be really. I mean, back in the day. Trouble, on the verge of a mental breakdown, Correct. Yes. pretty much. Because it's gonna talk, you're gonna talk, and they're gonna analyze you. Yes, and, 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 yes. and that whole, how does that make you feel? And you think, oh. correct. And and look, let's let's face it, not many people have access to yes. to that kind of help. Because yes. then it's the money, eh? Because you look yeah. at, you look at things. I mean, you can only really see a psychologist if you've got medical aid. Correct. And again, it comes down to the people in the hood. The people out there who are just general, normal, working class, who don't have yeah. medical aid, yeah. who can only really afford hospital cover, who those type of things, and then, and then they just get 
put to the wayside. And those people are the same people sitting there trying to trying to figure out the problem, sitting down, who drive to drinking, mm. who gets driven to, to everything else. So I think um, having that uh, psychologist available yeah. um, for the people who can't who can't really afford it, like yeah. like some people need to go listen. We need help. Yeah. Can we have something out here that 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 makes it accessible? Correct. You know, for for people like that. And yeah. that's the great thing about Cape Mental Health. A lot of people don't know is that they've got so many hubs throughout the community, okay. and all you have to do is to call Mental Health, and they'll find out where exactly you are, and there are representatives, and there are um, centres and and spaces that that you can go to, mm. and um, hopping onto that conversation. It's why I went to schools. It's why I. And I did it for free. Mm-hmm. And teenagers, uh, I mean, especially, yes. are oh, very, very much vulnerable to yeah. uh, these kind of uh, situations where, you know, the, the level of, of teenage suicides in the world is it's scary. It, it, yeah. Listen, I mean, if we look at the stats, I don't know the actual stats right now, mm. but um, if, 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 you look at the, if you look at the stats, you'll know that, that it's, it's bad. Yeah. It's bad, and you. I mean, I went to to primary schools where they were telling me there were nine-year-olds committing suicide. That is scary. I mean, how does a nine-year-old know how to to do that? Yeah, you know, that's what motivated me to keep moving forward with yeah. with visiting schools and going to communities, because I I, I feel like they're not getting it from parents yes. because communities are saying um, we don't want to talk about this. Yes, parents are saying I don't want to deal. Um, I don't want to deal with my child. My child's just naughty. My yeah. child is just not yeah. wanting to listen. My yes. child is just... But but <sighs> it's an ongoing conversation and there's, there's slowly but surely we're getting to the crux of it and I think just exposing kids to the conversation more and more lets them know, especially from the communities that we come from, that you don't have to, have to be a rofen or biskof. You can actually expose them to this in school. I mean, I know there's subjects like life orientation. Yes. But, yeah, but it's I haven't really seen I it being I used effectively. I was having a conversation Thank Thank with um, with somebody who's sort of in high school and um, you were talking about life orientation. Now. It's just just ab- about some of the subjects that they do now and I don't feel like they hit the mark. No. You know, when, you know, for somebody who's who left school and has like 20 years of life experience, I don't feel like a lot of it's really hitting the mark for for those who have to leave school eventually, and and face life. Yeah. And w- when you're gonna face life, there's so much that uh, I wish somebody had told me um, that I don't necessarily feel like they're learning now. And you know what's really the point mm. if they aren't going to be taught those things that they're gonna need in life. And you know, you know, people say, "Yeah, you need to know things like history. You need to know things like um, <laughs> science and all of that." I mean, yes, uh-huh. but let's be honest. And this is where I think kind of maths got it right. It, yeah. it, um, you know, with maths literacy, you know, you're learning about the stuff that you're going to need in life. Correct. You know, um, whereas you know, if you need uh, a maths, uh, a high score in maths, to, in, o- in order to be a scientist or whatever it else you planning on studying then fine you can you can upgrade mm. but the point is you need to be equipped with the things you're going to need in life and yeah. that's what I, I feel is lacking and i've always said i think psychology should be a subject in schools mm. I, I i agree with you i think that there's a lot that needs to shift in terms of curriculum Mm. That's, I, th- that's I think all that. W- yes, that's that's my point. I think we are we, we're going into uh, it's a new era now, uh, mm. as far as mental health and the perception of mental health and mental health issues that I think need to be addressed because the old curriculum, I mean it, it I mean it, it's it's from the dinosaur days. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, look, I'm not a teacher. No, I don't no, work me at, neither. At, 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 the, at the education department. This is just from an outsider's point of view. Yeah. Correct. And I think, and I think there's much to be desired. Yes. In in many spaces. You know what? Sorry, sorry to break your word, but I think just let me just hop on there real quickly, so so that we have it. I think, outside of music, what we should do is we should get. Um, Maybe I've got a friend, uh, Garth Newman, who's a, uh, who's a psychologist. Okay. I think maybe we should get Garth, and we should get uh, Kim, yeah, and we should get someone from the Department of Education to sit in on one of our one of our 
Thanks. Love that. I, I like that, that would a be lot. Amazing. You'd love to chat to Kim. Like Kim is this. doing a PhD on on um, parenting and childhood development. Beautiful. And understanding what, what is it in the home and in the environment. Maybe Playden and the King can expand. Boom. Yay. You know what I mean? I think, I think just especially <laughs> on this, man, I think it, it deserves it deserves that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so mm. people can get out there and, and, and just, and also just to maybe tap into, knock on that door at the Department of Education and say, yo, guys, like, this needs to be available, readily available to the kids, you know, out there in, in the normal um, community schools, you know? I do think the schools that are in environments that, that where they see this happening every day, I think they are fighting the fight. Yeah. I mean, I go to different schools and I understand. Yeah, they're trying to have these conversations. The problem is if you can't fight the fight individually. Yeah. You've got yeah. to fight the fight collectively. Exactly. It's so rough out there because every community is experiencing a different thing mm. and every community feels that that is important yes yes you know so this teenage pregnancy people are so passionate about that so Very that's true. important man then there's the gangsters who are trying to control of what's course. going on at the schools yes that's a problem then there's dropouts that's a problem and and i think what we're trying to say is that we're now starting to really see that we have a troubled society mm -hmm. yes and um we don't know where to start so some of us are saying maybe it starts at, gra at grassroots level maybe it's school maybe it's education mm. but then what do you do with the adults that that are sitting with all of us that are committing the crimes that we read about in the papers yes, and exactly. what are you doing about that i mean you, you might be able to you might be able to address for the future um sort of generations but what mm -hmm. about the current generation correct. right now correct and it's a big it's a big problem and i also have done stuff at prisons and I've spoken to, to, to young adults who are, wow. who are in prisons, uh, mm. Paul's more specifically, and, and uh, from petty crime to like hardcore. And uh, it's just, uh, what, what do you do? Because we're all products of, of where we're at mentally. We're mm. all products of what we've been through. What we've been through and, and, and uh, family circumstance and, and the environments we're in. And so... It's so multifaceted, but mm. but as, as long as we can sit at the table and say, I think it's time that we really mm. zoom in mm. on what's going wrong. Yes, you know. Um, wow. Hey, man, <laughs> trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to do my bit by visiting schools. Yeah. It's not, yeah. and easy that's amazing because it's 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 out of my own pocket. Yes, and it's, yes. It's, um, there's just too many schools. I mean, mm. if I must tell you, like all I get is 20 minutes sometimes in an, in, an, uh, in their assembly. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes they give me an hour if, if there's a free period and I get to sit with the kids. And 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 it's it's. I think if I think if everybody took the initiative to do their but like that, we could slowly but surely. Yeah. You know, if it's not just me going to a school, if it's me maybe this week at that school, but then guess what? That same week, another person's decided to take it on yes. and they're, they're attending the school. Yes. Yeah. And um, I just tried to prove a point by going to, to schools on my own and realizing that um, I, I, can, uh, I can make that change. I can, I, can, I can do it without funding. I can just jig my schedule around yes. and try and... Um, Make something happen. Mm. Yeah. The next person can do the same. That's why I always tell people: never underestimate your platform. Never underestimate that whether you feel like you're a uh, a stay-at-home parent. Yes. You still have a platform. Yeah. And there's still a level of influence that you can yes. that you can use. Yes. Um, to affect positive change. I. This is how cool Paul is. They're even adjusting umbrellas for him. <laughs> like I want to get to your level, guy. Where people, we don't have to say anything. People just say, just "I think he needs some more shade." I think. I need a cocktail with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> right now, because the weather calls for it. The weather calls for it. It does indeed. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about what what happened to you uh, yes. recently. What, what was it, six, six, seven months ago, a year Correct. ago? Uh, was it about no less than that? Yeah, it was about maybe three months ago. Yeah. It led um, to you pretty much being paralyzed. Yeah, I mean, so what happened was that I, I won the lottery. Yeah. No, and then <laughs> you bought a Maserati and yeah. you drove it into a wall. Yeah, yeah. No, it um, wasn't that. Well, I think life can drive you into a wall sometimes, yeah. and um, I just had a really was it burnout? Part of it, anxiety, burnout, all those things. And and uh, what happened was that I, we were driving in the car, myself and Kim, and I was in the passenger side. And this uh, is not the Maserati, by the way. No, no, but but but. 
it, it can come, it can come into my life. <laughs> um, just putting it out there. Yeah. So, so I had a, a, a period of time where I was just really stressed out. As we know what the industry is like. Yes. It had come to the fore that people were acting as management and they were, they were uh, saying I'm too busy for gigs. And so I wasn't getting the work. And, and um, it was really stressing me out because I didn't know who was doing this. And, and anyway, lots of politics and drama. And okay. it just sent me to a point where one day we were driving in the car and... and um, I was in the passenger seat and Kim was driving and I just wanted to pick something up off the, the floor. And I went, but I can't move my arm. Then I just felt my, the t- pins and needles feeling mm. and then my legs went dead. Mm. So both arms <laughs> are lame, my legs are lame, and then it starts feeling like someone's sitting on my chest because then this starts shutting down. Yeah. Then I could just feel my cheeks and all my muscles in my face just start doing this. And all I could say was hospital, like now. And Kim's mm. like, "What? What? Are you? We're just having a conversation. Or what yeah. are you I'm like, "No, right now, poor soul, Kim." Formula One. Uh, we get to the hospital, and they they need to get a wheelchair because I can't even stand. I can't move. Mm-hmm. And while this happens, my body just starts tensing up. Legs start doing this. My hands were literally up here. I couldn't breathe. Um, they were hooking me up to stuff, trying to figure out what's wrong. They sent me in very quickly for um, that to give me something to get my muscles to relax yeah. again. And uh, then I, they took head scans, the works, because they thought I was having a stroke mm. because of how lame I was. And um, it was actually the right side that was lame. Mm. You know, it's when you have yeah, a stroke. W- it's a left, yeah. And I was laying on the bed and the, the nurse was running. They've got like a tool like this. It's a long silver thing. And that's how they, they do like sensory yes. nerve checks. And they were running down my, my arm to my leg and I couldn't feel anything. I mean, she was piercing this thing into my foot and I couldn't feel anything. And they wouldn't let me go home and they were talking about how long I'd probably have to stay and the kinds of tests I have to do. And, and they, they ran all kinds of tests. I mean, it was I was hooked up to a heart machine to check what's going on. There yeah. was the cognizant stuff, the head stuff, the neuron thing. And, and um, they just couldn't understand because this is not a typical stroke because if yeah. it is a stroke because I was like slurred speech all mm. of it and um, just turned out it was anxiety and burnout and stress and it was the first time I mean I've heard about people having panic attacks, attacks. Panic but, attacks. I mean, and but, I just but this is way worse than a panic attack no no I just went like Ach, I'm maybe just like count to ten and you breathe and yes. you're sorted yes and it wasn't the case I mean for that entire I would say two weeks mm. couldn't eat couldn't get out of bed could, wasn't mobile wasn't able to comprehend things like I would just shut off and it was scary because you realize how immobile you can become and that when you're stressed out and when you don't yeah. look after yourself you don't yeah. take the time to to process what's happening because you must you must understand I when the pandemic happened I just hit the ground running and mm. I was really proud of myself I was mm. patting myself on the back because I was really well nestled into the online space yes I was creating work for other artists in the online space because I got <coughs> all my clients nationally to transition yeah so I was doing corporate shows during, um, using zoom yeah. yeah and I was doing morning music sessions and after music sessions from a studio to a company in Joburg or Durban yeah still getting my corporate rate yeah and saying okay I'm gonna pull this artist and I really felt good because I was go get her and this is what they tell you to do you mm. know don't make excuses don't complain yes. go out be active make, make something it happen ha- make it happen you, okay. you know <laughs> and and i was like really wow i'm this person i was in the media because the newspapers and and and, and i mean e-news and sbc news were interviewing me saying you really developed your online space how we do and i really felt cool i was like yes i'm an example of when you work hard but the trauma of all of that I wasn't yeah. dealing with yeah. because I had to shove a mask on my face. Mm. I was watching people die around me. I was watching friends with businesses really, I mean, banks were coming to claim cars and houses and people yeah. were moving back home to their grandparents. You know, um, you talk about kids, kids who are middle age moving to their parents with those parents to the grandparents mm. because they can only really afford one, one house. house. And you're watching all this unfold and you're trying to keep things going. And keep your business alive. Mm. And, and I didn't realize just how hard that was, man. And how traumatic it was for me. And yeah. Because as an artist, it's a, like it's a competitive space. And you just got to keep going. Because mm. your, your income is, is purely determined by how hard you work and where yes. you're seen and what you're doing and how you're doing it. And it really, I was in a, I found myself in a space where it just was too much. 
too much. Even though things opened up and I was about to embark on my European trip for a month and it's exciting, um, I thought I was going to die that day, yeah. to be honest. Jeez. It yeah. felt like I was going to die. And, and I mean, I was laying there, can't breathe, paralyzed, telling him, you know, check this policy, please, and, and tell the bank they need to transfer the funds to you and this needs to happen and Shame that needs it. to happen. And she's like freaking me out, just right. don't have these conversations. Um, but in that moment, I felt like I was going to die. Like, yeah. literally, oh, this is how it happens for me. This yeah. is my last moment. Um, and it put so many things into perspective where I just went, I can't not look after myself. I can't be caught up in this rat race mm. of... Because it's it's not just the industry. It's it's the social media thing of, like, you got to be seen to be doing well. Yeah. You know? you got to be seen... You gotta be seen uh, in the right circles, doing the right gigs. Yeah. Your songs have to be playlisted. Your songs have to be on everybody's TikToks. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have to be a happening brand. Because guess what? If people aren't liking and sharing and no one's dancing to your song, then you TikTok, don't exist. Then you don't exist. <laughs> and <laughs> no. the pressure of that. <laughs> so true. Um, because I come from a generation where social media wasn't a factor. Yes. Mm. It was about how good you are as a musician, it was about networks, it was about real real relationships and friendships that you yes. build and I think I think I just honestly got caught up in I'm a, I have to be a working artist I have to be doing well I have to be seen to be doing well I have to uh, work my social media and if you think about it it's this you're recording you perform it's this hey guys this is where we're at yeah. right now and you know um, mm. keep liking and sharing and oh thank you for the hearts and the yeah and I just, I just couldn't. I think I, I, I like le legit, literally like snapped a little. Mm. And, and it was, it, it, it's, it's scary to talk about because you don't want people to watch this and go, yeah, but social media is what you make of it. And mm. yeah, but there's this unwritten thing of like, yes, as especially when you are in, 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 in a public job, you have to be doing well, otherwise nobody wants to affiliate or be associated or Can you have to be hot and happening. Yes. Okay, exactly. Yes, sir. So we're check, there, check, there. check, check, check. Okay. Are, Lico, are you go? getting I level? Think so. I think I needed some more reverb. <laughs> reverb on my mic. <laughs> <laughs> my monitor's not quite right. <laughs> okay, hey, Lico. sound engineer, what do you think you're doing? Ooh, <laughs> well, hey, sound engineer. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a living. That's he, a, that's he, that's he's that. on both sides of the fence. I think, I think, I think sound engineers should have trained in the army because that's the kind of level of, of, of attacks that they get yeah. from, from, from artists and festivals. But, but I think it's why we're so closed off. You know, I speak on both sides as an engineer, as an, an artist. artist. So <clears throat> when I did guys, this thing... Guys, 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 can we just, can we get, can we, can we, talk, can we just intro that? And then <laughs> yeah. <we can> talk <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Jared, how do you feel about sound engineers? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, <laughs> love them. <laughs> Can I tell you what? There's no one more resilient <laughs> in the industry. Everybody wants you to wave a magic wand. Yes, <laughs> and you just got to know what everybody wants. I've st I've told people before. I I worked with um, Doctor and the Medics. And yes. you remember them? I was on tour with them. Um, we were running Liverpool. Um, all the way down. It was Doctor and the Medics and Chesney Hawks. Oh, I am the yeah. one and yeah. only. Which I is was actually there. a Nick Kershaw song. Yeah, so I was um, FOH uh, engineer on that tour and it was just, sure. ah, man, at one point I told him, dude, he wanted more monitor and it was just feedback, feedback, feedback. I said, I can give you 20 monitors. It's not going to change the way you sing. You sing shit. <laughs> Dude, but you that's sing the shit thing. And, and there's nothing. And he called my boss. And my boss called me. And I said, Bakev, he sings shit. 
I'm going to give you the same answer. Yeah. I can't polish a third. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the guy exactly. can't sing. It's one of my favourite phrases. That, 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 well, my favourite British phrase is you can roll third in glitter, doesn't make the earring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it ain't yeah. earrings. You know? <laughs> so that was, and, and that's my thing as an engineer, especially, uh, I mean, I spoke at um, the Cape Town Jazz Festival, you know, Running up to the festival, yeah. they have those little workshops. Mm. And um, I spoke at one of the workshops, and my opening line was um, for artists. It was like aspiring artists and people want to be in the industry and that type of thing. And I said, what do you do when you walk into the venue? What's the first thing you do? And guys said, oh, no, I do this, or I do that. Or, you know, I, I check my rider, make sure my drinks are there. I do this and all of this. Thing. And the funny thing is now, recently working on... On on the production on the on the on the point team, um, I realized that people actually do that. Yeah. Um, my first thing when I walk in is I go over to the engineer. I say, "Hey, how you doing?" Same here. Nice to meet you. You know, get liquor, them on blah, side. Blah, blah, blah. Let's, <laughs> That's actually the first person I deal with. Exactly. Yeah. And 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 you have to be. Look, that engineer can make or break you. You know, hmm. it's, it's, it's him, it's your FOH, and it's your monitor mix guy that you want to be, make sure you've got a lekker relationship with. Because if you don't, you're going to sound like shit. And you know what the biggest thing for me, uh, <coughs> I think, it's something I've always done, and it's always made sure it's a habit, and I tell other artists to do it. Always say thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's so simple. Yo. Not just on stage, oh, sound, lighting, thank you. That means nothing. Like, mm. after an event, people laugh at me. I'm sweaty. I'm done. I'm almost hoarse. I'm like, sorry, guys. <laughs> Guy, I just want to say thank you. Like, yeah. for what you're doing. Mm. Uh, you made my life easy. That kind of thing. And not to be pretentious. Yes. yes. It's just that acknowledge that it's a team yes. that's making exactly. the festival. You're exactly. only great. And people are only jumping and cheering because first they can hear you. Yes. Yes. And then they can see you, yeah. and it's all working together. Yes. Otherwise, you'd just be a dude talking on stage or singing on stage to themselves. Yeah. No amplification. No, exactly. Only the front row can hear you. Yeah. And, it, and it's, and it's a cappella. Very faint. Yeah, and it's very faint. <laughs> it's very faint. I actually, funny enough, talk about that. I was booked for an event once upon a time. And um, this is sometimes when people don't understand what goes into creating an event. And I rock up at this venue, and the person goes, Oh, um, you can just like that you can that's where you're gonna perform. And I was like, okay, like I don't see sound. Is there a sound guy? Is there someone I can talk to? No, no, no. <laughs> but you can just sing, the people will just hear you listen. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah <laughs> Like really? <laughs> so it's been an interesting time to watch events also learn about what 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 makes an event work with good sound and, and good companies and good sound engineers that come to the party. And yeah. I know it's the biggest thing in Cape Town. You always hear artists. Everyone's like, oh man, I'm, when you get booked or when somebody wants to book you, the first thing you ask on the phone is like, who's doing the sound? Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that determines like if I want to do this gig or not because yeah. you've had experience across the board now. So you yes. know who you want to work with and you go like... <sighs> <laughs> Sometimes with Kim, I'm like, okay, Kim, I'm, I'm going to do this gig and I know. Mm. I'll do it, but I know I'm going to be hoarse. Yeah. Because this one's doing the, yeah. you know, and yeah. people have their own idea of how they want sound to work. Ooh, people are not going to want to work with me now. But <laughs> 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 well, they just want to be your favorites. But yeah, but to answer your question, um, yeah. I have respect for the people who yes. make the shows come alive. I like that. And, and, and um, you're nothing without them, as you've mentioned. Yeah. And... It's a team effort. Doesn't matter who you are, your book. When when you're on that stage, it's a, you're part of a team. Yes, you know, and I love it. And I think what they need to also add to the curriculum is artist, sound engineer, language, yes, gesture, communication. Yeah, because I think it's so <coughs> funny when you're watching an artist on stage, because normally when some if you're on a lineup and you're next. Mm. That artist is performing and then you're in the booth with the sound guy yeah. talking about what it is that you want. Yeah. Yes. And the sound guy's always going, do you know what this person wants? He's showing me <laughs> stuff and I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> like, you know, you always see the artist red, bloodshot face, like upset. And then like... <laughs> <laughs> and then when you don't understand what the person's trying to yeah. say, they start gunning you on the mic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Mr. Sound Man. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And oh of course, man. you can't defend yourself sound. as a sound guy. Yeah. Well, like you can. You, you, you just, just switch him off. You, you just do this. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. 
Uh, I, was, I, was, I was literally sitting here thinking like we had had a power cut or something. Like that's all you do. Cool. Meanwhile, it's you just muting my mic. But that's yeah. the Mr. Sound, power cut. <laughs> what happened with Mr. Sound? Power cut. Sorry, guy. It happens. Load shedding. Um, <laughs> just for you. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, yeah, it's funny because it's funny uh, I think it's important that artists, now we're on that subject, I mean, there's always this universal yes. signatures. Like, yes. Um, in, in sign, I, I, this, not signatures, um, signs. Mm. And so I think it's important for artists just to, when you're going to work with people, yeah. Be even like beforehand, a- even if you've got your own language, go to him and say, when I do this, track louder. Yes. When I do this on the mic, and, uh, and it's definite, you know, this is the issue, yeah. mm. and I'll show you up or down. Or if I move to the monitor, it means I can't hear myself. Yeah. Then, you know? Mm. And don't act surprised when there's feedback coming from the monitor because you're putting your mic there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. You always go, oh, sound, sound guy. <laughs> He's like, anyway, yeah. Uh, okay, so from sound engineers to producers. Yes. Okay. We spoke briefly about Eclipse, um, but tell us about the album. You worked with um, Ibrahim on this, right? Correct. Yeah. Fully. Tell us about that. Break the rules. Break the Rules came at a time when I was really at a low in the industry. I was done because you feel like the sweat equity just doesn't add up. Mm. Mm. Uh, what you put into your career when there are gatekeepers, when there are opportunities that just don't come your way. Yes. Because it's a, it's a, it's a pocketed industry. There are circles of people and friends that just book each other and only use anyone. everybody always says a very difficult industry to get into but you can't blame them because everybody's sailing their boat and they're all mm. making sure that they're securing their income mm. yeah it just forces you to think differently i think yeah anyway and i just was at a time where i was on my knees and i was like you know what god i don't have money i'm really struggling right now i want a career you know i want this you've given me this gift of songwriting and performance i'm throwing it in your hands now because right now I don't know what else to do. Yeah. Mm. I've done ship contracts. I've done <coughs> contracts in Spain. I've, I've run around the world. I've tried to do that. I've then stayed in my country because they keep saying, oh, we keep losing our artists internationally. <laughs> they need to work. But then give us the work <laughs> exactly. so we can stay exactly. here. Anyway, mm. and I um, got on my knees. I said, God, you need to do something. Jesus, take the wheel. You. <laughs> friend. I then uh, randomly, because I'd never ever really dealt with, with Ibrahim before, but we were friends because we always saw each other at events. He called me and said, Jared, like, um, you know, he talks like that. You know, um, like, how are you doing? <laughs> no, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, no, listen, um, I was just thinking, you know. By the way, EB, if you're listening, we... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I'm, Malum. Yeah, Mr. Malum, Ibrahim Malum. We are going to get you on the podcast one day, okay? <laughs> just putting that up. <laughs> and he calls me and he says, yeah, you know, um, I do, what, what, are you, what, are you, what are you up to, like, with music? And I said, no, you know, I'm just not in a good space. Like, I'm just, I... I I can't even hide it. Like I'm just so over this whole thing. And it's like, well, you know, don't don't lose heart. Like I was mm. thinking, let's let's. I mean, come and see me. I'm really interested in, in working with you. I like your vibe. I like mm. what you do. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, was this is, was this like the prayer that was answered? Yeah. <laughs> what do you I, ask, right? Yeah. And I put <laughs> the phone down. And I'm like, what time am I gonna pay for this? Yeah. <laughs> because no one's gonna work for yeah, free. Yeah, of up course. In here. Of course. And legit, the next day, somebody um. I had contacted me to say this agent saw me perform. There's a new production coming up. Mm. It's a six month production in Cape Town. It's theatre. And the amount of money I would have made covers the album cost. Wow. No way. That's brilliant. So I took the, the gig on and we started recording simultaneously. I could pay. And um, that's how the project came alive. And it was, it was really so much fun because we were pressed for time. By the time I'd actually said, yes, okay, I'm going to do this project. Yeah. Um, we were like, I was writing intensely. I was recording three songs a day. Mm. Oh, wow. And just, we sat. It was beautiful because we had this body of work and then we sat and we were choosing songs for the album. And Lekker. we had decided to release two singles, which was New Life and Take Me To Your Heart. Mm-hmm. And um, Gallo. I mean, Take Me To Your Heart did reasonably well, didn't it? Mm. No, it did all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it got uh, playlisted in Johannesburg and that's yeah. where Gallo mm. caught wind of what we were doing. And contacted Ibrahim. And Ibrahim said, "Dude, uh, this label wants to give you a deal. Mm. Cool. Let's look at the deal. And that's the important thing I think artists should know is that even if you get a deal, mm. read it and make sure it's right. Change for you. what you want to change and send it back. Yeah. You know. And that's what we did. 
and we got not a 360 deal with everybody was funding everything we got a, a publishing deal we just went okay. for something like a publishing deal because we still wanted to own the, the masters course, yes and we wanted to be in control of the process and so we recorded the album and it was such a crazy moment because I was just happy to hold my album in my hand. Mm -hmm. And you know what? People were laughing at me because I was like, oh my word, it's in the case. <laughs> and it's got the cellophane wrapping. <laughs> it's like like a real album that you buy in store. Can yes. I just tell you, um, Adam Duritz, uh, Becky Hill, yeah. all of these guys that I've interviewed said the same really thing. <laughs> it is so nice to actually have that physical copy and i'm one that still i still like cds man i still got a, a wall of cds at home and and i'm one of those who loves the physical copy so uh, becky hill actually cried the day mm. that uh she because she had had a bad day and um this box arrived and it was all of it was it was a, a, a you know a batch of her cds and she opened it up and she looked at it and she like cried you know so it's I that kind of thing with that. it's mm. that kind of thing man you know what it's it's just i think this idea that's always been in your head yeah. when it comes to life and it's in front of you and you've done it mm. okay we've done it the team but like this is something when i was a child five years old to six to seven to ten so high school career primary school career one day i'm gonna see my cd in my hands mm. but because of your environments maybe you come from it, it just feels like this Pie dream. in the sky. Pipe yeah. dream. Pipe dream. Mm. And it was there in front of me. Not only did that happen at the time that Musica was still operating. Oh, yes. It <gasps> it was in the store. It was new release. Wow. And it wasn't stocked in the local. It Section. was in the international. They didn't know. Oh. <laughs> because obviously when they put the CD in, they played it in the store. Yes. And the, the <coughs> manager just went, okay, that has to be in the new release. The wow. International wow. And I went to the Musicals and went, no, no, no. It's local. <laughs> it needs to be in the local section. <laughs> and it was such a dope feeling to see that people were placing you yeah. standard-wise, or like just what it sounds like and mm. what it feels like. Yes. Because I really focused on, and from the artwork, I had a hand to play, and I used like really expensive photographers. Even mm. for the video of Take Me To Your Heart, I used like legit team. I had to cough up a lot of money, my hard work, um, earned money, saved money that I pumped into it. And... I said, if this is the last album I'm gonna do, first and last, yeah. I need to look back and not go, I could have done that better. Yeah. Yes. I should have just spent a bit more on that. Yeah. I should have just focused on that. And Ibrahim stepped back and we were so happy with what we had done mm, yeah. for ourselves. But I remember this moment. I was at the Artscape, I was doing a show with the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra. And um, I just finished the show and I was, Kim was waiting for me in the foyer because we were going to leave. And as I walked, I was like, someone, something, like, your phone vibrates. I'm like, talking to people, I'm like, no, this person can wait, or whatever it is, can wait. And mid-conversation, another message goes through. And I opened my phone, and it was a few radio DJs. I was like, what's going on? And everybody's saying, congratulations, congratulations. And I'm like, Congratulations, you are nominated in the best pop album category for the oh South African Music Awards. Wow. And I just broke down and cried. Wow. Amazing. I think whoever was around me, they just caught me because they didn't understand. It was, what, what? Like, yeah. was it a tragedy? Did you get a bad phone call? Yeah. What's going on? I was like, guys, I'm, you, you should see who I'm up, what I'm up against or who I'm in this category with. And yes. it was someone who had just won a reality TV show, mm -hmm. Idols. It was two big Joburg artists. Mm. Um, and my name was there. Mm. And I kind of, it was the first time I went, Jared, you have everything you need to make this happen for yeah. us. Yeah. You know, it's something when you, when you realize that these people that you've admired, that you've watched, that you grew up listening to, and the industry is saying, hey, we're categorizing you here. Alongside them. Alongside you're a peer. Mm. Mm. I'll share the story. I used to, obviously, sing in the shower. It was the best acoustics, you know, the vibe in the <laughs> shower. <laughs> obviously, no water because you want to hear it clearly. <laughs> and, 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 um, and there was, 
you know, your shower's got uh, your shampoo and your dishcloth. <coughs> and that was my yes. makeshift studio and we had rehearsed and we I kind of felt like I was in a space where I could practice and do and hear my voice clearly with yes. the acoustics. And I stood on the red carpet and I realized a few years ago I was in a shower. <laughs> I'm on a red carpet now. Yes. Like when I was in the shower, to my left was the Colgate shampoo. <laughs> you know the Colgate shampoo? And to my right was like the washcloth or whatever else. And people use loofahs these days. Yes, indeed. And, um, Do you have one of the long... The long no, I didn't have a loofah. I'm oh. saying they oh. use loofah. I had a washcloth. <laughs> anyway, and uh, <laughs> too much information, I think. And um, it's important to wash, guys. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> and, and I realized that here I'm standing on the red carpet and there's like AKA is there where the Colgate was. Mm. <laughs> and show my jaws is where the washcloth was. Yeah. Like there's something to be said about envisioning. Yes. Yes. You know, I had a very crazy imag imagination as a child. Just thought of your next album cover. In the shower. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like you, you have a picture of the 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 shampoo, and the and the and the cloth, and the um, <laughs> body wash, and on each one is a different artist that you looked up to. <laughs> and Come on! If you look down at the floor where your feet are, there's the red carpet. But who would be the loofah? <laughs> the gatekeeper. Because that's somebody that's the very close to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be the gatekeeper. Got to be the gatekeeper. They are the loofers. <laughs> the gatekeepers are the loofers of it the industry. To, it has to be the, it's got to be the gatekeeper, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, and and I just I know it's a weird thing to say, but it just it just took me back to that moment. And when I was shaking everyone's hands, and they were, and it's so cool because Joe Berg, they kind of low key watch what we're doing sometimes. Yeah. Yes, they, they pretend they don't, but yeah. yeah, yeah. And when I was like, because I'm naive, I introduce myself to everybody. Yeah. Like, anyway, and they were like, no, we know, we know who you are. We've mm. seen the vibe, we've seen the mm. the music and yeah. the, the videos and stuff. And we're like, what you doing? And um, <laughs> and it's always this. So when you're gonna come up to Joba, I'm like, ha, I'm doing it from Cape Town. Uh -uh. Why do I have to come up there all the time? Mm. Um, and it was a magical moment to do the album. Yeah. And Ibrahim and I, we really poured our hearts and souls, and we really wrote and created for the love of pop mm. and mm. for the love of doing what we want to do and not conforming to genres. Because South Africa says to have your song featured on a radio advert or a TV advert or to get into the festival, it has to be a sound. Mm. Yes. That's the popular sound. And I'm going, no, I, I want to do what resonates with me. Mm. And and that worked. It showed that it worked mm. because even during the process, I was like, shouldn't I be doing more of like a, maybe an ethnic sound, what they yeah. say, or like yeah. a, a house sound. Yeah. And it's not natural to me, but I was yes. like, in order for South Africa to say I'm worth something, do mm. I have to do these mm. arms? Is that is that kind of why you went sort of there with these arms? Yeah, it was. It, it was. It, I really just wanted to see. And that, that was that was post the album, by the way. Yeah, and the album. I mean, the song played. I did yeah. its thing. Yeah. But I could feel that it wasn't me. Mm. I, I loved the song. I but it was it. an experimentation. Correct. And I think everybody does that. Yeah. As an artist, you go through a period where you think. What else can I do? Yeah, you gotta Let's try. try. You Let's gotta see try. how this feels. Let me put the spice. People still love the song. Let I me mean, put this shirt on and see what it feels like. Yes, yeah. and yeah. I'm always passionate about what I do, so yeah. I feel it was the right choice for that song. Yeah, for the way it was written. Yeah, yeah. and it worked. It did its thing. I and mean, then you also had it remixed as well. Correct, and more so in Pretoria and those regions. Yeah, yeah. It really they they off. do like those remixes. I mean, I was getting called from so many stations I'd never heard of before. Mm. And even the the the, the Campus stations. Yes. Mm. They were like, oh, we're playing this at the campus parties and it's doing its nice. thing. And I was like, oh. Mm. Um, but it's about it's about not limiting yourself and understanding yeah. what mm. works and trying things out and not being afraid to try those things. Yes. And that wasn't with Ibrahim, that was with somebody else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because I also like to change it. I like to see who's doing what and I like yeah. to understand production and also, style. Um, uh, yeah, w w certain production styles you you end up over the course, I suppose if you stay with the producer the whole time, mm -hmm. you end up sounding pretty much the same in in like throughout your career. Correct. Without you know approaching. I think, I think Justin Timberlake and, and Timberland went through that. Yes, that, yeah. that where that they had that Was sound. It, yeah. Yes. And but then I think but what a sound! The Neptunes as well. I mean <laughs> yeah, what a sound! <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
What a sound. What a I mean, sound, I mean, it's I. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you, and, I, and you do an artist, <laughs> an artist do resonate with certain people, like friends yeah. connect yeah. with friends and people. Yes. And, I, and you find the producers that. Yeah, you I, found that I found that fit with Ibrahim as yeah, well. I mean, no, so I, I myself yeah. um, worked with Mark. I mean, Mark's my, he's like my brother, right? In, in England, and we had everything down in Alien Sound and in, in bigger stuff. But. Mark is my person. He's he's the person I record with. He's producer. We bounce off each other. It, yeah. It, we just it's a it's a really good fit, and I love his humor. So it's you know we get on. Yeah. And um, so I'd fly in from Macau wherever, go spend some time in the UK, do the work, you know, hang there, and I bring my musicians in as well, and we'd all stay in England for like a month or a couple of weeks and do some work, whatever, and then go yeah. back to wherever yeah. we came from. And for the longest time, I've wanted to work with Ibrahim, like for ages. Yeah. And I, and I was like, dude, can you know, wanna wanna work with you? Blah 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 blah. I was just, I either I couldn't find the budget or, or yeah. something or timing or scheduling or I wasn't in the country. And but when we did, I mean, last year when we when we recorded Furusakuru, I was like, I called him. I said, dude, and I think I called him beginning of the year. And I said, dude, this year, next couple of months, it's on. I want to do this, right? And he's like, amazing. Let's hit it. I love Ibrahim as a person. Like he's, oh, yeah. he's, and uh, what what gets me is also he's also got two young kids. Mm. So we we you know we understand the dynamic of being a father, yeah. of, of working, of putting in the time, this and that, similar similar type of vibe. But I just love how he works, and he's funny. Ibrahim's very funny, and it doesn't doesn't come across that way if you meet him. Like first off, you like to anybody who. You, you meet him, you be like, he's just pretty funny. No, I don't think he's funny, but he's actually really funny. He's actually more English than what you think. Oh, really? What you would think he is. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's super dry. He's really super dry. <laughs> he's super dry. <laughs> That's and not a plug. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. <laughs> and so, um, but working with him was, was that type. So I feel what you're saying and, and you know, what you're bringing across. Um, of what you experience Rapport. with him is exactly it's 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 just he's a liquor oh man and he does great production and you were actually saying the same thing um jared said was you looked at the product afterwards and you were like i'm happy with this yes exactly i like this and i don't regret anything yeah exactly. i mean ibrahim just has his his, his his finger on the pulse with, with what's happening with with music with mixing styles yes he references really well in terms of he understands when you're trying to explain something, yes, what you yeah. mean, and um, he's just—he's—I think he's so detached from the industry that that it makes him creative. Yes, he's not really falling into the trap of oh, we have to like this and like that. <laughs> He'll hear you out, but he's such a professional in that he will advise. And 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 I love that he's detached. I love that he's family orientated. I like that he's—I mean, I get on with his wife as well. Yes, um, we know each other for a very long time. I mean, I even when I met when I just started embarking on my musical journey. So that was like I was probably 17 or 18. Mm. And from there, we just started crossing paths. Trying to work out like what year that was. Yeah, <laughs> don't ask me about <laughs> math. <it's laughs> <like, laughs> right but, but he, um, very instrumental in obviously the success that I have now. And, and he, he, he gets me. Um, but I'm also at the same time not close off to other people. Yes. I think... It's important to engage with other musicians. It's important to engage with other producers. It's important to see who's doing what. Yes. And um, yeah, I think the industry is too too vast in that sense that you that you you just focus on one person and mm. one production style and one genre and one thing. But 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 um, when it works, it works. What is your favorite song of that album? Whew, that's rough, man. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. I mean, and, and how did you decide on which songs to actually release as singles? <laughs> so, so, so d a two-part question. Yeah, what's, no. what's your answer? No, listen, I, I love all the songs. No, my, I, I would just say that they all speak to different times and, and, and thinking processes. But in terms of what I, what I really enjoyed listening to was, was doing Unicorns because I've never done a track like that. Uh, yes. Ibrahim pushed me. He was like, let's add a bit of trap. Let's add a bit of this. I was like, trap me. I'm the most least... Hardcore looking trap singing <laughs> urban <laughs> artist yeah. that you'll find. Unicorns is cool, man. Yeah, and I, and I didn't expect the kids yeah. would, would take 
take to it the way they did. Yeah. I mean, when I went to this and I did my school tours, all the kids were like, do that song. Yeah, you do the unicorn song. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was so weird because unicorns was such a big thing at of the course, time. I didn't is. realize because obviously the album released later. Yes. Unicorns became a trend mm. in terms of visuals. Yes. Yes. Um, there was that Take Me To Your Heart was fun because everybody I played it to, they hated the song. Okay, so what about, uh, what, hated the song? Yeah. Uh, after New Life, and then uh, I, I played um, Take Me To Your Heart for people and they're like, oh, this is all right. This is okay. Is it because like, they'd heard it so happen. many times? <laughs> no, no, it's just, they just didn't feel the vibe. Okay. Mm. All right. But That's I think it was, it was, Cause a lot of what we did was forward thinking. Yeah. Yes. Because that genre wasn't really doing its thing. Mm. Um, it disappeared for a bit with Daft Punk. That whole 70s yeah. Yeah. Base, base. Well, it kind of worked. I mean, it worked on radio, that's for sure. <coughs> it was a slow burner in the yeah. sense that we didn't want to write hits that, that run to the number one spot and then disappears as quickly as it got there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We like slow burners because we feel like we want people to to meet the song, get yes. to know the song, yeah, yeah, yeah. Relationship like your with song, the song, and then celebrate when it gets to number Correct. one. Correct. But not just that, I think it just it needs to, a song needs to. Breathe, breathe, and you need to you need to appropriate the song to your life. Mm. I think the hits are great because they really target where you are right now, and yeah. it tells you how to feel. And it's a it's a number one pop song. Yes, but those slow burners are the ones that stand the test of time. Yes. I mean, mm. "Take Me to Your Heart" was released in twenty eighteen, twenty seventeen. Wow. It still gets airplay. It's yeah, of still course. It's in the high rotation in the recurrence. Yeah. yeah, and so it's like. That's that's the makings of a classic when it's a slow burner and people can really find the song and make it part of their lives. Yes. And you know. And yeah. what about the non-singles on that album? Oh. Well, out of the non-singles, what's your favorite? What would you go back and say? I should have released that as a single. Work of art. Work of art. Yeah, I like work of art. Mm. There's also. Um, La 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 is the name yeah, of the song. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, that that's got a that that's got a like you very quick on that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and my favorite, uh, not because it's it's not because it's track two and it's just after the intro, but uh, I don't believe it. Wow, I really? like that song a lot. <laughs> yeah. So were you like big on Depeche Mode and those things? I, I'm big on the '80s. Yeah. So that's probably why. That's yeah. probably we why. referenced we referenced Depeche Mode. We referenced mm. like oh, I remember growing up. But uh, listening to these LPs and mm. yeah, those, yeah and I so think that's why maybe that song speaks to me, uh, yeah. speaks to me but yeah. uh, I really do like that yeah. one that'd be the age of you that'd indeed the age. indeed <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, and uh, intro mm. intro yeah because intro the intro of the album I wrote like when I was in high school already okay, okay. I was experimenting with contemporary sounds and I was very really into Bjork Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, still enjoy some of the I stuff. I remember Bjork. Yeah. yeah, and I really was really into the experimentation of like melody and mm. not doing something conventionally pop. Yes. And funny enough, with the album, I had so many people who listened to fine music radio because <laughs> yes, because that song is based off of a classical style. Yes. The yeah. piano and stuff. It actually played on fine music radio and classical stations, and so people were like, "I love that song," and it's the intro of the album. And People were like, it was jarring because the people who like that genre would then listen to, get the album, and that's the only song in that style. And they're like, oh, the rest of it's like hardcore pop. Have you heard um, Extreme? Now, you know Extreme do more than words. Yes. 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 But do you know that more, in, more than words, which is this acoustic, beautiful song, mm. five minute long song, which uh, is like, gets requested a lot, is in between two hardcore songs on a hardcore album, Rock. I didn't you actually take check that out. And listen to that. It's actually quite incredible. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, exactly. And it's exactly like that. And the you know, you buy the album for that song and realize, uh, this is it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and to answer the question about the releases, how they worked, it yeah. was actually f actually supporters and people who bought the okay. album. So obviously, Take Me To Your Heart and, and New Life was released before. Mm. But Paradise. Uh, Gauging off of what people just gravitate oh, to. Oh no! Yeah, Paradise. That that is one of the best things you could have done was release Paradise. I didn't even realize at the time that it would be a thing. It was so good. I just and you know you released it at a similar time of Versace on the floor. Correct. It was Valentine's. Yes, in February. and Versace on the floor from Bruno Mars was yes. out at the time, and, and it was very <laughs> much those the, those and sounds. And that sound was around, and that's I think maybe eight oh eight was like one of the biggest kind things. Of why, why I think it after worked. Beyonce said eight oh eight, everybody started <laughs> using it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 uh, it was honestly people. People just and I would just gauge and see. Oh, this, these are the songs people are interacting with, and that's what we went. Okay, that one, that one. Also with Gallo, they had a say mm. as yeah. well. So, yeah, but course. they also felt strongly about the commercial songs like yeah. that. You did a lot of traveling overseas, or you mm. have done a lot mm. of traveling. Where have you been? Where have you played? What's your favorite place? Woo! I yeah. mean, for different reasons. I loved being in Spain just because who's going to not like being in Spain? Yes, mm-hmm. fair enough. It was a hardcore schedule because I was a contracted artist to production company. And was it Mark Wayne who who, who got you gigs in Spain? Or did no, you meet we Mark just, Wayne I there? I just or? met him along the way because okay. we weren't working for the same companies. But when you are on an island, because yeah. cause Spain consists of different islands as well, and you get you get seconded to an island. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you'll find other South African artists working for different companies, but they also got seconded to those islands, and then you you just connect, you know? Yeah. Oh, there's a group of South Africans, I'm going to connect. Yeah. And that's how I got to, to know about him, mm. and um, a few other amazing artists um, that are still doing the contacts, and they're, they're loving it. I, I, it's because Spain is one of those places where... It's like this. You could be anywhere in the yeah. world. It's yes. chilled. You perform at hotels. And it's a nice lifestyle, lifestyle yes. when you do those contracts yeah. because you only really work from maybe 6 o'clock. you got to get ready. You, maybe your show's at 8. Mm. Maybe it's a 2.45er. You're done. But the rest of the day is yours. And when you, you're you performing in the summer season, so they have all their fiestas. And yes. You really get a taste of the culture. And that was my first international contract. Um, living alone abroad. Man. <laughs> it was rough in the beginning because, like the company I worked for, they would pay me late. Yeah. And there was one time they paid me like super late, and you, I had no money. I was living in this house. You can't drink the tap water because yeah, it doesn't work for you. <laughs> I was drinking the tap water. Oh I was God. hopping from house to house <laughs> getting food. I dropped so much weight. When I came home, I weighed about. I won't lie to you about. 63 Jeez. Wow. I weighed about wow. 63 because first it's hard work mm. you're sweating your ass off and then because you're earning in euros you're watching your money so you're not spending that much on food because you're trying to save so that really that experience taught me a lot about myself yeah. and um, it was a great vibe and then I worked in Sweden and Finland that yeah. was great because I got to learn about Eurovision and yes. I was connecting with artists who were either backup singers or songwriters for Eurovision and they had also had a big role to play in, in, in Break the Rules okay. because those relationships are maintained. So I would workshop songs, we'd send them over and they'd be like, no, do it like this, yes. do a harmony like that. And so between, Break the Rules actually between Europe and South Africa is how, it, how yeah. it came about. And, okay. and, and it was, a, I think any opportunity to travel is amazing firstly. Yes. And secondly, uh, to do what you love when it's performance it's great because different audiences teach you different things about yourself because mm. the one thing about a Spanish audience man if it's pure Spanish like they are not impressed easily yeah we we, we got exactly the same thing from Mark as well yeah, yeah. Ne? yeah. yeah. Mark said exactly the same they will let you know 19 years experience <laughs> of a Spanish audience they will let you know yeah in the first month I was almost sent home because wow. the agents, the Spanish agents weren't happy because the way you perform in Cape Town is very different to what you're going yes. to do there. Yes. There it's about, like, can you sing? And can you en- engage us with the music? Mm. Yeah. Also, can you learn the language? Yes. So I was like, when I... I still remember the speeches and I get different people to write out speeches so I could have conversations <laughs> at my shows. It was Buenas noches, noches señora, señorita, como están? Uh, están despertando el show, which means are you enjoying my show? Voy a cantar cantillones del whoever. So I'm saying the kinds of songs I sing are from whoever, whoever, whoever. And manos arriba is like hands in the air, bailar, dance. So, so if you didn't acclimatize, mm. You were dead in the You're water. That's what Mark Wayne was telling us about when he did yep. a podcast in Spanish and he had different <laughs> possible answers uh, to possible questions like <coughs> up on the wall. And he was like, okay, uh, you're asking that question. It That's sounds the a, closest Sounds a bit it. like that. So yeah, yeah, but he's done well. I mean, he was in yeah. The Voice. Mm, he yes. was. Spain, La I mean, Voz. La Voz. Yes. And when they, and, and, and to your, like, to your South Africans abroad who've acclimatized speaking someone else's language, mm. it's just like, you did that. Yeah, you learned well the language. done. Yeah. yeah, my cousin. I was. I spent time with him in the south of France. Um, Harold Corelli is actually an old rugby player in <laughs> South Africa. He he played for Eastern Cape and then he okay. played for Stormers and all this. 
and he got an opportunity many years ago to move to, to France and to build a life for himself. And I saw him for the first time, last time I saw him, I was nine years old. Oh, wow. And so going abroad recently and spending yes. time with him is amazing. And he um, fluent mm. in French. Yeah. 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 And so I was like, what do they want? He's like, I'll handle it. And it's like, push your hole, push your hole. Dude! Yeah. Anyway, so so I can say across the board, each experience taught me something different. Um, yeah. I also did cruise ships abroad. Mm. Also Scandinavian. That almost that is, is another hardcore. rite of passage, isn't it? <laughs> with you musicians. Is you have ships. to have done Spain. Yes. And you have to have done cruise ships. And cruise ships. I never did Spain. But you, no. you did an international. Yeah, yeah. you did ne- Southeast Asia. I never did Spain. Uh, Spain, I, and I you got did an America. opportunity. I did the States, yeah. yeah. Well, I did Europe. I did the States, Southeast Asia, um, South America, pretty much. Okay, you you're know. excused for not doing Spain. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when you become a working musician and you're yes. from the most southern tip of Africa, yes. where it's kind of limited... When you're taking it on as a full-time job, chances are you will be contracted somewhere. Why yes. is it limited? Because... What can we do to unlimit it? Because there are only a certain amount of venues and certain amount of live gigs. And I think... I think and the gatekeepers. I th- gatekeepers. <laughs> it's segmented. I said it. Yeah. yeah. I think you have... You must understand, we don't have an industry, we have a monopoly. Yep. Right? And yep. I'll say it again, we do not have an industry, we have a monopoly. Because if you have enough money... And the money gets you into certain circles, yeah. and those people become your friends. You become influential, and so they hang on your every word. So if you want to keep all of this for yourself, mm. you can do that. Mm. Now, I don't want you in my show. Tell the the event organizer, don't book him. Mm. I'll give you less. I'll, I'll charge you less. I'll do you that favor, but then just sh- scrap him. You know, we don't put his face on the poster. We don't talk about him when you mention the artists on the shows. Don't advertise him. It's ruthless, mm. and 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 it's a scary time because it's starting to happen again in yeah. the industry. I uh, that's what got me to the point where I had an anxiety yes. attack and a breakdown was just that I couldn't fathom the fact that we are working so hard. We are all part of this industry growing, yet we wanna we wanna block each other, yet we wanna we wanna badmouth each other, yet we don't know these artists properly, but we have so much to say about them behind the scenes. Yeah, and there's no. There's no consistency in authenticity. Because don't shake my hand and smile with me and be like, oh man, it's mm. so good to see you. It's great that you're on this gig. Tomorrow you hear a completely different story yeah. from reputable sources that, yeah. hey man, they had the world of nonsense is there about and they actually don't like you. I'm like, then just be upfront about it. Like, yeah. I'm here to contribute to the industry. I'm here to see how far I go in this. Mm. Yeah. And we should stop being intimidated by each other. We should stop letting someone else's success put us off. Yeah. Um, we need to get back to the space where if you win, we all win. Mm. Yes. You know? And guess what? Like, like I'm going to be excited for you because I know what it's like to not have work. I know exactly. what it's like to want something so badly and then when you get it, it's amazing. And we're in a culture where we can't talk about our achievements. We can't talk about what we, what we get in our yeah. lives through our, our, our passion because we know once it's put out there, other people go, you're doing too well. Yeah, yeah. So we'll go we, need to, we need to curb you. We'll go so get you talking about getting back to those roots again where when one person succeeds, it opens the, so the doors for the others. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And it's a struggle, man, because because it's a hard business and there are people who make it. There are people who we say or perceive to have not made it. Yeah. But what is it based off of? Mm. Yeah. You know, there is this one thing that people say. Like I remember growing up, it was in the industry... Jared, you have to be at all the VIP parties. Jared, you have to be seen. You have to befriend this one and make yes. friends with this one and make friends with that one mm. because that is how you're going to be part of the circle. And that circle moves. Because yes. anybody who's not a part of that, exactly. your, your music doesn't see the light of day. Mm. What? But I think that circle exists in other areas of... Um, it's business. It's the media, yeah. business, yeah. Um, I- other industries as well. Very, very yeah. much so. It doesn't, it doesn't you know, make sense to me. You don't play golf with that guy. You don't play golf with yes. all of us. And to be honest, I mean, that that's a big part of my personality in that I've never really felt as though I belong to the industry or, mm. I, or, I, or I have a space in this industry. Mm. I've yeah. honestly always felt like I'm sailing my own boat here. Yeah. Because you build relationships, you build friendships, it ends up being fleeting because when it's hot, it's hot and everybody wants to be your friend. Mm. Right? But music is a thing where it's ever-flowing, so 
everybody gets their time in the sun to shine. Yeah. But when the sun is not shining on you, those people are gone. Mm. It's like, if you're a playlist manager at a radio station, everybody loves you. People are blowing <laughs> smoke up your ass because you need to play my song. Yeah. Yeah. But when yeah. you move and you're not the playlist manager, are you getting those messages? Are you getting yeah. those birthday messages? Are you getting invited? Mm. Are, they, are they caring about, hey man, how are you doing? Yeah. Actually, how's that situation we spoke about? No, because guess what? They're not getting anything from you. Yeah. It's like when I had Break the Rules and it was one of the most spoken about uh, albums and the, the songs were really charting. Um, it was unreal to see who was wanting to connect. Because yeah. people that never, like when I met them before, didn't care mm. that I was in the room. Mm. Now it's like, oh, there's a bit of attention. Let me align with you. Yes. Because I'm going to be in the photo with you. Yes. I'm going to tag you in a photo and people are going to see the association, the affiliation. Yeah. And when I started moving away and I took, I, it was also like a bit of an experiment for me where I'm still out there, still performing, still doing my thing. But in terms of writing and recording, I went like, let me just pull back and figure yeah. out what I want to do. Yeah. Some of these people just poof, disappeared. Yeah. But it was so therapeutic because now I know who's in my corner. Yeah. Mm. I know who my friends are. I know who actually cares about mm. yeah. me as Jared, me as the artist. Yeah. And actually, like, who actually is 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 wanting to see you grow and succeed. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. Wow. We've been through a lot. Um, <laughs> the one thing I do want to ask, though, is looking forward, uh, you've um, got a couple of new projects on the go. Yes. What can you tell us? Well, you know, I'm... What can I say? <laughs> mm. what, 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 what are you allowed to reveal? What can I not say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what don't I say? No, the thing is, like, like I mentioned before, I'm always trying new things and I'm trying to find new ways of expressing myself. Yes. And so... Um, right now, I'm back in studio, yeah. writing and recording, not just for myself, for other artists. Um, I actually got to write for Mark. Oh, cool! Which yes. is cool. His first single released to radio. Yeah, no broken which hearts. was no, uh, yeah, no broken uh, heart. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's yeah, right. I wrote that. And if you listen to the demo, I, I, I've got a very thin pop tone. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want no love affair tonight. And then when I heard him, he was like, I don't want love a bit. I was like, hey, yeah. <laughs> he's got that grit. And it just changes the whole yeah, feeling of yeah, the yeah. song. Um, so I'm back in studio writing, not just for myself, but for other people. So I am mm. farming songs out. Okay. So um, that's exciting. Lega. But it's nice to kind of do that. It's a different... Um, there's a lot of people outside of South Africa who are songwriters for others. Yeah. yeah. And it's actually... it's. It's not so popular within South Africa that you're a songwriter for somebody else. Yeah. Most people just write their own songs Correct. and that's kind of it. So it's very cool that you've got this other um, branch of the Jared Ricketts. I was just nervous to do it because I always felt like, who wants to sing the stuff I'm writing? Like, <laughs> yeah. like I, I don't ever treat my stuff, oh, this, like, you know, you get those people who's like, man, what I'm doing is amazing and fantastic, man. Just have a listen to this. Like, like man, I did that. And it's just, <laughs> I've never been that guy. I don't, I'm not saying it's an issue. Yeah. I've just never had that, like, I'm a songwriter. I've yeah. never called myself a songwriter until this actual conversation yeah. we're having now. Yes. Okay. Um, and so oh, Jared, I, yeah? sorry, you're a songwriter. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> thank you. I mean, if you're going to say it, you know, <laughs> yeah, just amplify that in the, in the conversation and add a bit of reverb. Yeah, mix it in. Jared Ricketts, the songwriter. 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 That's a whole single. <laughs> songwriter. <laughs> songwriter. <laughs> song, song, song. Right, 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 right. Yeah, anyway. well, I, I, I will ask him to produce it, but... Um. Come on. Why not? So, um, so I'm writing back in studio. Very excited about that. It's been, a, it's been a minute. I'm still doing my fashion. My wife and I still produce um, clothing. Mm -hmm. And we stock them at various uh, boutiques. What's most, the brand? Uh, the Ricketts. The Ricketts. Yeah, so, it's, so, so it's And where do you stock them? In Paul. Hey, listen, we don't have to... <laughs> we don't have to worry about... It wasn't an earthquake. <laughs> we don't have to worry about radio advertising. <laughs> Put it out there. Who, who is it? Who is it? Where do people get it? All that stuff. So it's in Paul, um, online. You can contact us directly. Um, and then we also courier, we pack it to everybody. Okay, so they cool. get it to their doorstep. Um, we're also going to be stocking this place very soon. Nice. We're also doing home, home wear. So we're going to be uh, branching out next year. So we're just finalizing some product. Um, as a couple, we've just found out our, our, our point of view and the tone that we want to use and create the stuff that we love. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily creating because, oh, it needs to sell. Yes. Yeah. 
we just love the fact that there's been this interest and you want to in, share it. in who we are. Mm. Kim was, when we got married, it was so funny because we did everything in secret and we took everybody's cell phones. Um, no one knew a thing. It was just very close family. We had about 50 people, including catering staff, so it was very small. Mm. Um, but someone leaked to someone, not from our family, but somebody who was part of the staff. Staff. Yeah. Told someone who works in media and then mm. that's how it got out. And uh, she was like, but why do people care? Like, mm. I'm just me. But now it's, she's been invited to speak at various events. She's oh, cool. And I told her it's so interesting that people care about what, what we have to say. Yes. Yeah. And there's a responsibility with that. Yes. So a lot of what we create and what we're doing, it's, it's keeping in mind that we want people to have healthy minds. We want people to love the way they feel. And so the homeware is going to speak to that because the homeware is all about creating spaces that help you yeah. keep, a, keep yourself calm yeah. um, off the bat of mental health conversations yes. as well. Um, outside of that, um, developing a few projects yes. and a few Which interesting we things we can't of. speak about now. But I've always been one to tap into different things. Yes. So I'm excited to see what the future holds. I um, like it. Still doing my menswear range, which is dropping next year as well. Lovely. So I started it and I took a break and I'm doing it again. Um, but just being creative, finding spaces cool. to create and do and be and exist and, yes. and bring out our innermost thoughts into the world and mm. birth them. And whether it works or not, hey, I tried. Mm. Um, and, and just uh, there's a lot of more TV work. So mm. actually this week, I don't know when this is going to end, but I'll just say... <laughs> Uh, this week I've got a couple of TV shows that I was given the opportunity to actually host and perform. Lekker. Um, got a good relationship with, with Johan Stemmet and <laughs> his team and he does a lot of productions. And <coughs> he's, he's really opened up so many doors for me. And so cool. lots of conversations having in the pipeline. Yes, so you probably see me do a lot more TV presenting. Nice. nice. Um, which is, I, know I did presenter search yeah. and I was top five in South Africa in the competition. And so that started the conversation of hey okay. I can actually yeah. host a few things mm. you're going to remember our small podcast ah please no you will be there together <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there together yeah we'll be the Colgate and the washcloth <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but 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 um, and I just want to encourage everybody who's watching mm. this and listening is that as much as they see you doing this yes. and they see me speaking speaking about what I'm doing you have everything you need to, to make your dreams come alive Absolutely. and I think now's the time um, whatever's on your heart, do it. Exactly. Whatever's in your heart, do it. <laughs> 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 that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's quite a uh, endorsement, right? Come there. on. <laughs> and and we should get to a space where, and I say this to the kids at school, is that when somebody has an idea or a dream, don't laugh at them. Yes. Mm. Don't talk them out of it. Yes. Like, find out how you can help. Or yes. just egg them on. Just mm. say, hey, man, like, just do it. Like, just go out there and make mm. it happen. We'll support. Mm. And... In terms of music, I just want to encourage everybody to not just go to the big festivals, but like go onto Facebook, find out about who's performing at a little cafe, who's performing at at an unconventional space that you probably would not go to mm. because not everybody has access to the big theaters, mm. not everybody has access to spaces. Go and support, buy your ticket, even if you feel like, okay, I'm sitting in a coffee shop and I'm watching this person mm. and they just, them and their guitar, Give them a tip. Support. <laughs> so, say again? Give them a tip. Give them, give them a tip, guys. <laughs> um, and, and just go and, and support, man, because we need this now more than ever. Some artists managed to sustain themselves over the pandemic. Others are really starting from scratch. Mm. And let's be a part of rebuilding and, and, and knocking down the doors, but also knocking down the gatekeepers yes. who hold those doors. Yes. Um, because it's actually up to the artists to, to build and create the industry. Yes. So email your, your, your festival creators and say, why isn't this artist on the bill? Mm. You know, or, or, hey, artists, do what I did when I wasn't on anyone's bill. I took my backing tracks with me to the festivals. And guess what? When there was a break between artists, I said, I'm going to do two songs. Mm. Nice. Just there, straight and to that, the engineer. Hey, man, my I'm talking about community <laughs> chess carnival, all these places that I wanted to be on the on the, the the list and I wasn't on the list and I just had my tax in my pocket mm -hmm. and I would say listen there's a slot can I have two songs and I would ask everybody and nag them and they'd be like okay just keep this guy <laughs> and then I get on stage and he'd be like 
are you available next year? <laughs> <laughs> Actually. So, so I, I applaud you guys and what you're doing. I love the fact that it's, it's, it's this is so unconventional to see the two of you together doing this because I didn't put the two together. I yes. know, well, we didn't <laughs> until we met. <laughs> and it promotes collaboration. Yes. yes. And I love that you are getting stories. Yeah. Um, these, are, these are the things that people need to hear because mm -hmm. like you're saying, there's someone at home, there's a kid at home, there's someone who has access to the internet that's going to see this and go, I thought it was just normal people that go through these issues. Mm -hmm. But exactly. there's someone who we think we put on a platform yes. and hey, he's, he's also just a person. Mm -hmm. We're just people. Mm. And can't we just be liquor? Yes. I like it. I like just it. be liquor. Can I just uh, quickly ask you because we, we this is something that uh, I guess just keeps getting brought <laughs> up at every single podcast. I don't because stop anymore. Everybody has one except me. But like, <laughs> tell us about your tattoo. Is that your only one? Ah, yeah. So I was <laughs> this thing, this thing. Yeah, can I um, see it? It's a crucifix. Uh, okay. With, with it's supposed to be the crown of thorns. Yes, yes, yes. So I was about twenty. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, yeah, uh, a very spur of the moment. Uh huh. We found out this guy used to work at a tattoo parlor, but he still has all his equipment at home. Oh right. And one my of sister those. actually what took me. What is up with you guys? <laughs> 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 if we can score on a tattoo guy, we're gonna do it. <laughs> I was so brave because um, <coughs> I enjoyed maybe one or two glasses of something. Oh, yes. Okay, liquor. And so it make, made you braver. Brave! <laughs> hey! And I sat there and I said, you know what? Do something freehand. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I saw it and I was like, I think it's pretty cool. Thank you. And it was quite cool. I mean, I did move about. So you can see there's a bit of like some screen. Yeah, well you can't see it from a distance. Yeah. It's just one big smudge right now. <laughs> but but anyway, like, yeah, I just did the uh, uh, the tattoo and it was it was... And had meaning for me. Yeah. Yes. Um, but <laughs> it was just so funny to see someone do something free and everybody standing around going, ah! what is he doing? <laughs> He's, but he did say, what do you want? Yeah. He said, a cross. You yeah. know? And um, I love tattoos. I don't have an issue with it. I'm mm. not brave enough to do a sleeve. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> sleeve. Um, but I think it's I think it's 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 cool when you get to express yourself that way. I mean, my dream tattoo. It's your only one, right? It's my only yeah. one. Yeah. Going to get another one? For now. Your dream tattoo is? Yeah. My dream tattoo, and it sounds so whack, is I want a sleeve, but I don't want it to be an integrated sleeve like okay. that. I want it to be piece by isolated piece. pictures, but I only w I want the most iconic cartoon characters. Okay. Oh, wrapped right. Wrapped around and wrapped around. So like Daffy Duck, Mickey Mouse, Bugs Snoopy, Bunny, Bugs Bunny, Pluto. You get it. I get it. Smurf. Smurf. Yeah. I just, I just, I'm, I'm weird like that. So I'm I just feel fad. like. Who? And do you integrate? <laughs> and do you integrate Disney? <laughs> and I heard something else. <laughs> 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 Shh. Yeah. Very, very quiet. I was like, <laughs> "Sure, guy." We're hunting rabbits. Yeah, yeah. Hunting that rabbits. dude. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so, so I. I don't so know what the fuck you heard. <laughs> uh, I will tell you afterwards. Do yeah. you integrate then Disney and Marvel and DC and everything, or is it only Disney? Are we talking? No, I think we're talking. No, like, I think it's across like, the board. Like it's iconic. Okay. Oh, so you're not necessarily just talking like Looney Tunes or something. No, okay. like I, I want to just, like I feel I love creativity and I love the fact that I grew up watching You're going to put the Ninja Turtles yes. on there? Yo, that's a rough one. Okay. I don't know. Well, there's Maybe. five of them. So four turtles. Maybe I want them. The, like and the Splinter. unsung hero. Who was the guru? The rat? Sh um, yeah, Splinter. Splinter. Maybe I'll hit Splinter because nobody, nobody talks about Splinter. Yes, no, Master poor Splinter. Splinter. He gets a rough deal being a rat and all. That's the thing, but uh, no one talks about it. Yeah. You know, Gatekeepers. it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even there. <laughs> oh, goodness. Drain, drain lid keepers. Uh, I think we better go because this, um, <laughs> but, this has gone south very quickly. <laughs> but, no, deep south. <laughs> oh! But no, um, but, 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 uh, I mean. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you just say gatekeepers and all the doors start closing. <laughs> but but uh, but uh, but 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 I think it's cool that what you guys are doing, and and I'm happy. And thank you for allowing me to be here to share. Lika, Lika. I haven't actually seen you that often. Yes, I exactly. Mean, so to have you here, and when you when you spoke about the fact that I connected with you all those years ago, it just you realize we're all interconnected. We yes. all entered each life, each other's lives at mm. a certain point, and it's so important that you just. Just be authentic, be yourself. Um, don't act out of character. Yeah. Yes. Because you never know when you're going to see people again. You yeah. know? And, and I think the youth need to hear that because they're yeah. so quick to 
to have this culture on social media where something happens, they want to ah and ah and there's bad blood and there's beef yeah. and then, yeah. yeah. Jared Ricketts. Uh, it's been amazing. It's been so much fun hanging out with yeah. you today. I had a good time. Listen, Tzedeka. despite all the, the noise interruptions, what, what we see, we saw babies crying. Uh, we saw dogs barking. Dogs fighting. The odd waiter <laughs> sticking his arm into the shop. <laughs> doors um, banging. Doors slamming. Doors, doors slamming. <laughs> Cars parking. There we go. Car alarms. Come on. I think people are going to think we added those sounds in after. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make it interesting. Yeah. But thank you for having me. I look forward to seeing all of this unfold. This is I amazing. I heard the lineup of artists and people that you're going to speak to. And the spin-offs. Brilliant. Yeah, well done I'm too. glad you mentioned the spin-offs because we've got a few spin-offs <laughs> planned. Even though we're only two episodes in, we've got some spin-offs <laughs> planned. But it's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Jared Ricketts, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Jared. Guys. Listen, let's do this again sometime. We Amen. will. We will. Right. Definitely. <laughs>